I'm like so anal about it. Like phone wallet keys oh, all the time. Oh, that's oh, that's how you keep track of everything. Yeah, it's the secret pocket. You just just shove, whoop. just right up there. Hey, I'm Marcus. I'm Matrix, and I'm Nick. We are working class nerds. Cue the intro. That's right, we are Working Class Nerds, the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information. Today is Thursday, March 30th, 2023, and you can find this. The TV was definitely at Level 192 Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and anywhere you can find a podcast in the galaxy far, far away. You can also find every single Working Class Nerds episode on YouTube. Just search for the Working Class Nerds podcast or go to youtube.com slash MarcusB814, click on playlists, click on Working Class Nerds, and boom! Every episode past and present right at your fingertips. You can watch me definitely fail at video games Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays at twitch.tv slash MarcusB814. And you can watch me play video games every single Monday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash nickvern51. We're all on the social media. I am at MarcusB814. I am Atrax underscore A. And I'm at Nick Vern. That's NEC Game Yard. And this week's episode, we are recapping PAX East. The three of us are back from our travel excursions, and we are ready to recap. But first, Atrax, besides PAX East, obviously, what have you been up to? Well, uh, man, coming back from PAX East, it has been a hectic, hectic weekend. So you I describe got your travel. Yes. So I got home to describe the travel for PAX. I worked on Wednesday, worked a full eight hour shift Wednesday, went home, had maybe half an hour to finish my packing, grab a quick bite to eat out the door to the airport. Yep. Flew. Uh, had a three-hour layover in one spot, flew Which overnight. Which completely sucks ass. It 100%. actually wasn't too bad. I wish <laughs> that I wish that my flight, if my flight was like one hour longer, it would have been perfect from uh, Seattle to Boston. If that flight was six hours instead of five hours, I think I could have gotten a lot more quality sleep. But it was only five hours. So I flew overnight. Got into Boston at quarter to eight in the morning. Uh, Marcus and Nick picked me up. We went straight to PAX for the whole day. And then I got sleep later that night. Right. Coming home, then uh, I got, let's see, my flight left Boston at three o'clock. And I didn't get into my house until 2 a.m. Portland time, which is 5 a.m. Eastern. Oh, that's terrible. Jesus. So I was traveling for well over 12 hours. And then I had one day, one slight day at home. And then I come into work Monday and they're saying, hey, everybody's on mandatory 10 hour shifts instead of eight hour shifts. And that's kind of crazy. Rip that guy. I, I basically said, I can't handle that. Like physically, I can't handle that. So. I will give you the best that I can, which is Monday and Wednesday. And, you know, the rest of the days I need to work my normal shift. And even so, I am, like, destroyed. Like, I I just, I'm probably just going to (laughs) take, just go to bed after this. I can't. Yeah, Marcus is giving me the, oh, don't don't, don't feel bad, Atrex. Yeah, he does does the same shit to me. No, I know. Especially when I worked with him. Everybody else has it so easy compared to Marcus. He's he's the ultimate work. Oh, yeah. no, I get it. No, no. I work three jobs. Uh, I'm yeah, but family and kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, I'm I'm I built have sand diff- in my vagina. I definitely don't have sand <laughs> in my vagina. But like, uh, everyone I'm just else built- gets to play more games than me. That is the truth. Ah, there yeah. we go. <laughs> um, it is definitely a <clears throat> excuse me. It's definitely I'm built different than most people. 
That's pretty yes. much it. But there's nothing wrong. Well, listen, I don't listen. I don't dog on anybody about actual stuff, actual work or anything, because like, here's the difference. Me working 10, 12, 16 hours, I'm working for me. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. When mm-hmm. you're at your work, you're working for J- John Wayne company. That yep. who gives noth- no fucks about you, your your employee number one six five four three. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's uh-huh. all you are. You're basically a clone trooper. Right. And the you know what I mean? And for CP. them to say five, it five, 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 five. Exactly. Them saying mandatory <laughs> overtime is like, holy shit, we got a big order and we gotta get it out because we wanna make an extra million dollars today. Yeah. Or you know what I mean? Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's an enjoyable place to work. So if they need a little extra, it's fine. But when it's very when it's ex, when too much is expected of me, that's when I'm just like, all right, this is the best that I can do. And you know, we keep on keeping on. Yeah. So and, and just for the record, that extra overtime paycheck is pretty fucking sweet. It's okay. It's all right. Mm-hmm. Anyway, well, no, I, I agree. Hold on, let me quick caveat about that. Like when I used to work at the um, hospital, well, work, I should say I still work at the hospital, but when I used to work in the ED, if you worked overtime, a lot of the times, it, like based on where our pay was, it wasn't worth it. So like you would work, a, there's a sweet spot where you the overtime rate you'd get, which is like time and a half, actually kicks you up into the higher tax rate bracket. And so you get taxed at like a five or ten percent higher rate than you're like in the the super poverty poverty into like the middle class bracket. And so like you actually take like one person's like, yeah, I literally took home less money working overtime because of the extra taxes. Now they'll get it back at the end of the year, but that's not how that's supposed to fucking work. No, no, no. no. Right. So <laughs> if the the key is if you're working overtime, it's anything less than fifty or less hours. As soon as you cross over fifty hours, you're automatically put in a different bracket. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so after fifty hours, it's not worth it to work OT. Well, yeah, an extra shift would be over fifty. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, two shifts actually. Sorry, sorry. Thirty six is full, and then twelve. No, it's okay. Forty eight. Yeah, I gotcha. Either way, and also too, for like like you said, Marcus, for you, you work twelve, fourteen, sixteen hours. If every my. If my job was sitting at a computer entering numbers, I could probably do that for a 10 hour, 12 hour shift, but I'm moving like metal around all day and like I'm not physically built for a job to like work that job 10 hours. I can do it for eight hours, no problem, but like I'm I'm just not, I just can't do it, you know? Buddy, it's okay. You have, you have... (laughs) <laughs> you're a nine to five worker that's what you are yep. there's nothing wrong yeah. with that nothing wrong with that no at all not at all and you know but 75 percent of americans are built that way right see punch i'm, like, in, I'm more out. of a more of a 8 30 to like 345 worker <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one too nick and then a, a nice tiktok for 45 minutes at the end right. of the day yeah or what i'm just being silly sometimes on occasion i actually do work later to finish something but sure hey i mean i'm working right now <laughs> you're working so, now yeah we're we're working now this is uh job number three this is job number yeah this is job two. number three <laughs> <laughs> yeah job number two uh, this sorry, is i, I think i, I cut I, you off no no it's okay um well let me and, ask you this it'll be oh, going back to your flights cut off. no no uh, going back to your flights before you move on yeah. Also, too, you not only did you fly back, and yes, you had Sunday to chill, and the end then worked into uh, ten hour overtime. But then there's the jet lag of going from the best coast to the west coast, in that right. time difference. Yeah, yep. definitely. Even even just for two days, it definitely messed with me. Oh, quite I can a imagine. Bit. So it's it's been a very interesting week. I'm pretty exhausted, but thoroughly enjoyed it. I've been listening to the audio that we recorded at PAX during the overtime hours that I have worked. So it's been very nice to just... that's That's been helping get me through it, just those memories of PAX, and I can't wait to talk about them later. So when I finally come home from work, Monday night, 
we did the Modern Warfare 2 raid uh, with, well, Nick and I did it with Rayu. Oh, yeah. We said, hey, that was we're, awesome. gonna, we're finally back. And uh, I'll let Nick talk about it a little bit later because it was his stream, but I had a great time. We did part and- two. That means we're all caught up with the raids. Oh, yes. Now we have the skills to carry Marcus through it. Yes. Hopefully, maybe. I, think, I don't know. I think you would enjoy the second raid a lot better than the first. Yeah. Do you agree? It's got jumping puzzles, Marcus. It, the jumping puzzles are fun, way more fun than those water puzzles. Yep. And like the difficulty of the enemies, like the mechanics, are more enjoyable to work through, I thought, in the second yep. one. It's like, a little bit more manageable. Even the gas part where you have to run through the gas the gas rooms and do all of that stuff. Yeah. You can you can defend yourself relatively easy and it's more a matter of timing than yeah, it it's is like just being really good at killing, killing AIs. Stuff. Yeah. Right. That's that's what I thought too. It it yeah. mattered more about your team like uh cohesiveness, like your timing for the switches and like right. like hey, we gotta right. do this right, three, two, one, go. Versus mm-hmm. like Oh, I have to like cheese dick this mechanic of the gas in the room and go into the water to look up at the screen while I'm getting shot at and there's bomb, dr- you know what I mean, bomb drones and shit in the first yeah. one. Yeah. Or is like the second one? It's more like oh, it it's you require it requires team chemistry and you know it rewards that. It's not just like not yeah. You go yeah. It, it I just what you're saying. Fu- fundamental fundamental introductory mechanics later on. So the jumping puzzles get progressively harder. Yeah. And then the switches and rooms and all that stuff also get progressively harder. So mm-hmm. de- I definitely like episode two better than episode one. Agreed. And then also I've been getting a small group together of uh, random friends that I've met to play this game called Prop Night. I've mentioned okay. it quite a few times before. It's been on sale for... Two fifty five dollars pretty often, and I gifted it to a couple of people that I wanted to game with, and it's worked out really well. For those of you who don't know what Prop Night is, it's Dead by Daylight mixed with Prop Hunt from Gary's Mod. So there's four survivors against one killer, and the four survivors run around and fix machines in order to escape, and obviously the killer tries to stop them, but. Mm-hmm the survivors can turn into props and then they can try and hide from the killer. And then the different killers have different ways to identify what's, you know, a prop and what's not. They kind of all have their own mechanics. And as you get better at the map, then you kind of know what's a prop, what's not. You learn how to, oh, that, hey, that wasn't there, or you hear the sounds that the props make as they move around. It's a lot of fun. Highly recommend. We've played some online games when we've been waiting for full custom lobbies because you only need five people. And there's a lot of, because it's a relatively small community, there's a lot of tryhards and there's no ranked. So it makes it a little, some games are really unfun. But if you're just playing a custom lobby with friends and everybody's, the, you know, understands that we're there to have a good time, not win, then it leads to some really, really funny moments and definitely makes for a relaxing time uh, outside of work. Nice. That sounds fun. Yeah, it's a blast. So, Marcus, how's your week been, man? Before you start, what yeah. hat is that? Free rides. It's a free oh, ride nice. hat. Nice. Okay. I didn't I didn't know what the logo was. Always repping. Anyways. That's, that's um, a sweet hat. So yeah. we we got the Destiny Raid team together. Um and we started King's Fall working on it. I think we cleared the first two or three encounters. Um, pretty much a lot of the team is learning. I'm learning how to teach. It was, it's fun. Um, we didn't do it last week, uh, or this past Sunday because I was beat. We all got home from PAX. One of the members wasn't going to be there and I did a thing. Um, I did a thing that I said I never was going to do. I started to play Elden Ring. 
Um, <laughs> By I'll the get way, to... if if any community member can tell me where what episode that's from, where he says, "I will never play Elden Ring," I know. I would highly appreciate it. Well, I'll incentivize if if you find the spot in the podcast where I say. I will never play Elden Ring again, and you message me, Atrax, or Nick, you win yourself a working class nerd smug. Boom. Oh, yeah. There you go. The contest is set. I this need guy- it for content reasons. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, um, I'll talk about that more in a minute. Honestly, uh, I got myself a new Xbox controller. So, when I was at PAX, I really wanted to buy a controller because um, I don't have my own. And I was just honestly like I was looking. All of them are like a hundred bucks plus, and I really so like want almost two hundred. Most of them, yeah. Some of them yeah, were two hundred. Like they were modded, and like yeah. I really wanted. Uh, I was going to buy the new Razer one, the V two, which was like hundred and thirty dollars. But then I said to myself, "Look it, I don't really use a controller, and this control the standard issue Xbox. Well, this is like electric green or." yellow i don't know anyway i went to the store with my daughter we saw like it. highlighter it was, colored yeah it was 50 bucks you know what i'm saying like and i'm like that's yeah. all i need it's a brand new controller it's just gonna sit in my office like whenever i need it it's there i don't need a quick trigger pull i'm not a console player like this controller is gonna be fucking fine i yeah, don't yeah. need to go spend you know 120 dollars on a controller you know what right. i mean or I if you use that one and find out that you need a better controller, you can always get get a better one, you know? Right. Um. Yeah, so one really cool thing I'll say uh, to piggyback off what Atrax was saying earlier about flying, it was really a surreal feeling when I texted him and said, yo, bitch ass, come outside, we're here. And he walks outside and you like, give an embrace for the first time. Like I've known a tracks for years, but like it's always through a discord video call or right. It's never been in person. And like, honestly, I won't get into it, but like we'll get into it later. But the first night of PAX was pretty, it was a fucking awesome night because it was just us three chilling. Mm-hmm. And we'll, and I was Nick so and a- tired. Nick and Atrax oh, yeah. were so fucked up and so <laughs> tired that they were fucking. I wasn't that banged up. Well, Dude, we were chilling. Okay? I was a little squinty, I guess. but Yeah. But anyway. I was um, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> the last thing I want to just talk about Elden Ring is. So when we were at PAX, we were walking around the Intel booth and Elden Ring was there. And Atrax was like, Marcus, it's your time. Just like, like loaded on one of their pre-built like, PCs. Right. Marcus, yeah. just yeah. play it. There's no like just play it. And I was like, okay, no problem. I'll play it. So I played it and there was this troll. And I didn't know it was a troll. It's just look I thought it was a boss. But it wasn't a boss. <laughs> and regular, regular like I've never played a game like this. I'm like, what are the controls? Blah 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 blah. And I yeah. got like I I hit it twice and I rolled out of the way, which was fine, and then it's st- like stuck his leg out of nowhere and stopped me. It was the most unfair shit ever. And little did I know, Atrax was fucking recording it. <laughs> so, like, it's there in infamy. He made a YouTube short out of it. And people, you know, people's comments in YouTube were just funny. Like, get good scrub. Yeah. This is a skill issue. This is it. Yeah. It's this not game fair. is totally fair. It's just a skill issue. Yes. And I was like, <laughs> and I would resp- I was just responding with him. Oh, one of them said, clearly this guy has only played Skyrim. Yeah, <laughs> and like I'm like I never played that game either, but it was, it was really fun. So, what that did to me, uh, and to be honest, is that opened up something like in my head. Like okay. I was, like I enjoyed it, and I was like, and then I played. Well, I'll talk about that, but I played so many games. But, like, Elden Ring did something to me, like, I need to play this game because, like, I don't like failing. 
Yeah, and, see, like it, like a, it was like a challenge. It's like, yes. fuck you, I'm I like, am gonna do well in this. He's right. He's never been so demolished by a game before. The... <laughs> <laughs> well, I have been demolished. It's called nightmare rating, but the difference is, Elden Ring is like nightmare rating solo. You have to be the tank, the healer, and the DPS. Well, where, and also the whole game is nightmare rating. Where well, that's like, that's what I'm saying. The whole game. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we have 625 views on my Elden Ring debacle. But anyway, <laughs> um, really, truly, it was awesome. It was awesome to hang out with Nick as well. Like, forget about yeah. Atrax for a second. Like, it was awesome to hang out with Atrax. But, like, just me and Nick just chilling, too. Like, cruising together there. Like, chatting. Fuck, I'm tired. Let's go to Starbucks. Like, it was It was just oh, a fucking... It was just a great the, weekend. Yeah. And... You, when I got married, somebody gave me advice and Mm -hmm. they said, at some point, whenever you do something awesome, you need to stand back and take a snapshot of that moment in your life because you'll never forget that. Yeah. And I did that in our wedding. That's really good advice. But there was a moment and it wasn't actually for me. I took a picture of a tracks standing in front on this like causeway inside the convention center where he's like looking down on everything and all you see is his back but that moment will go down in infamy for me just as a moment in time that like that's with me forever because at that moment you realize like hey i'm at the top of my game that moment for me as well marcus i remember before right before there it was just was it thursday or friday i think it was friday Friday. it was friday and it had closed maybe 15 minutes prior the Mm -hmm. the expo hall floor had closed but the outside was still open and they had all sorts of stuff going on yeah and i was i think it was my last day so i knew that it was pretty much over except for what was going on that evening and i walked by and i just kind of saw through one of the windows the empty expo hall floor. And I wanted to just, I walked through that causeway and I looked around and it was so quiet, but that was at that moment, I was so happy to be there. And I was filled with, I I was just filled with emotion. It was, I was happy. I was kind of sad that I couldn't go back down there and, you know, find out stuff that I hadn't or even, revisit stuff that i had and i like marcus said top of your game this was my first big gaming convention ever and i got to go as media and we'll talk more about all the awesome games we played and all the awesome people that we met with and all of that came to at that moment as well and so yeah that is i agree with you marcus that's a moment that i'll remember forever too just looking over all those games and that empty expo hall floor how big it was that was that was something that's a, that's great advice for for lots of events i remember con- pretty consciously doing that a bunch when i went to that um Vince Wilfork Hall of Fame shindig mm-hmm. with my yeah. dad was just like recognize this is a really crazy moment like a once in a lifetime type of thing like take it in like be be aware be in the moment and conscious of that and and really make an effort to take it in you know yeah that way you're not trying to like recall stuff through memories it's like i don't know it it solidifies it a lot better for you but anyway nick what have you been up to well i don't know how different i sound but i got a brand spanking new microphone a bit of an upgrade if you will you do sound good uh, this is the Audio Technica AT twenty forty, which is um, uh, not, not their, not their tip top, but they're like one down from the tip top for for podcasts and stuff. Um, it's top tier. Yes. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, it's it's way better. Um, what the sweet things for me? So I I, I used Audio Technica before Marcus and I had gotten our our boom arms and microphones from them like four years ago or something. I think was it the second packs we went to? I think it was the second packs we went to. And um, I got a yeah new microphone and a boom arm. And this boom arm is so much better than the old one. Like, I can actually just set it and forget it. It doesn't, like, droop over time. Like, well, 
Dude, the it's not does, a $12 boom arm. Yeah, it was like a, I don't know, I think 60 or $70, I think. Right. It was supposed to be It's more a real it boom sale. arm. Yeah, it's a yeah. real boom arm. And then, um, yeah, the microphone was like 20 or 30% off. At, like, if you bought anything from the Audio Technica booth at the event, it was like 20 or 30% off. So that was sweet. Um, but what's nice is I can actually, I connected the two XLR cables that I have here. I didn't realize you could do that with them until I started messing with it. And I actually, you know, I, I tucked it into the boom arm nicely and have it running under my desk. So now, like, the cables are totally out of the way. It's really nice. Well, it's because, too, now it's, like, dedicated. Like, this is your mic, whether you're streaming or you're podcasting or anything yeah, you're doing on your computer. Like, even if you best. had to do a Zoom meeting, you could use that microphone. It would be completely fine. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. I, I use this for, like, the video calls for therapy and stuff like that, too. Same deal. Right. All the above. It's sweet. Um, I think it's way better. Another good thing is like it's I don't have to be like the other microphone. I have to be like literally my mouth touching it for it to like sound good and everything. But with this one, I can be like a fist away. So I don't have to be like all up on, on it all top the time. of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a lot nicer. Right? It gives me more like flexibility. So it's for out sure. of my way. I don't have to adjust it. There's no cords in the way. And right. I don't have to be as close to it. Plus, it sounds better. It's like just win, 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 win. Um. Yeah, like a track said, we did the Call of Duty raid, the second one, part two. I don't forget chapter two, whatever it's called, the the two point oh, um, and that was awesome. I mean, stuff we already said. A tracks and Ryu definitely carried me, uh, and through certain points, ha! it was a, it was a lot of like, come on, come on, Nick, we got to go over here. <laughs> Especially in the jumping puzzles, like, all right, why don't you go first? Because that's the easiest spot. <laughs> yeah, or or in the middle. Or in the middle. Yeah, I think later first, we need to, I need First to go or in the middle. the middle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Quickly, okay, all right. It's it's the middle fan, Nick. I know that I know that you could just look back. I'm getting shot in the back, but it's okay. Here, middle fan. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. It was great. Uh we practiced for Marcus. Yeah, we did it. Yeah. Now now I'm better, you know. Oh I yeah. Sucked. I by the end I sucked less. And uh it was wicked fun. I enjoyed that one a lot. Um, I don't know if you recall from a while ago, probably a month ago and change now. I had like a car, uh, whole debacle. conundrum. Debacle. Oh yeah. When we got broke down on the side of the road and the one time your car breaks down, the one person you would be calling to pick you up is with you in the car. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's finally settled. So my, that, that whole situation. So I got a new car, but I didn't really get a new car. I, I ended up buying my dad's car from him. Um, which is a uh, like for whatever he owed on it, which is nice. So now I have like a nicer car with like, you know, super junker prices for car payments, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So so that's sweet. And my dad, I found out this week he's getting a car too. So he like he was gonna basically he was gonna buy a new car anyways. But he was gonna kind of wait till the fall. So he ended up giving me his car. Well, I bought it. You know, from from took over the the loan essentially. And then, no, um, you bought the car from him. You went to the bank. You got a loan. It's you bought the car from him. Yeah, I did. You didn't yeah. take over the loan payments. You bought no, the true. car from. Him. Yeah, I got my own loan. Yeah, you're a big and boy now. Stuff. Yep, I got <laughs> car payments and everything. I wear pull ups the whole th- the whole line. Yay! Uh, yay! <laughs> I'm a big boy right now. The world yep. of debt. Yep. Yeah. Just add it to the add it to the uh, pile. The pile. Um. So that's 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 that. But it's almost done. I, I it was a lot of it's funny. Like my dad and I are so similar in a lot of ways, but we're also super different. Like I try to like keep up with certain things in my car, and he just doesn't doesn't even come on his radar. Like <laughs> Marcus is shaking his head. Like, what Nick, are you talking about? <laughs> Nick expected his dad to like put brand new brakes on it, new tires, no, I new did everything. Not. Yeah, like his no, dad. No, no. Just, I, it, I expected. I expected him to do nothing but i expected him to like have kept up the car just as as he was using it himself like it needed new new wipers well they were horrible the wipers are terrible like that's just lazy. And rear. That, oh, that's man. what i'm saying it's that's, like laziness. that's where i'm at my wipers are so bad but i'm just but like uh it's so easy to just they swap. work not if if they smudge uh oh, forget i'm a wiper like marcus is a graphical has a graphical obsession like my windshield needs to be clean. Like, I'll, like that's fair. Windex. Let's go. So, <laughs> change the wipers. Need an oil change. That's no big deal. But like, he also had no clue they needed an oil change. 
He was like, oh, yeah, I just got the oil done. Should be fine. I'm like, dude, it's been 6,000 miles since you got it. He's like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, well, like, hello? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's Don't fine. Care. I'll do it. But like he just just like totally just totally I'm just I'm I'm saying well your dad and me are your dad yeah your dad and me are a lot alike like I don't give a fuck about cars you turn them on you drive them and park them like I don't give a fuck about my car yeah Yeah. I I, I check the oil like once every two months and yeah just just to make sure that there's plenty of it and it's not like black yeah you know filthy I mean. To clarify, I'm not like batching my dad because obviously right. I'm super thankful for him, you know, helping me with the car situation a lot. But I'm just like more highlighting the difference in like, I don't know, mental lifestyle. status about yeah. lifestyle stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I'm, all, I'm like checking that stuff all the time or like aware of it, I should say, you know, and then like, yeah, I get it. The car also ends up in, the, in needing brakes and stuff. So I'm going to take care of that, too. But and it was it was just funny to be like. Really, you don't like keep up with this as much because I do, or at least try to. But right, um, so yeah, the car situation settled. I actually own the car now; it's registered to me. All that fun stuff. So, um, you know, that was a whole debacle. Not debacle, but it's just a lot of paperwork, and you got to get the forms, and you forgot to have your dad sign once, and you got to go back to him, and then go back to the RV the next day, and it's a whole thing. <laughs> but anyways, right. uh, that's it for me, Marcus. Do we have any news? Yeah, so Star Wars The Old Republic news. I know we haven't mentioned it a little bit, but it is huge, huge news. So they okay. dropped this Tuesday. kind of was a surprise. They let us know kind of last minute last week while we were at PAX. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure Wednesday or Thursday last week, it was like, hey, new update coming. So what came in the update was the Galactic Seasons 4, the PvP Season 2, Um they changed some medals in PvP, a bunch of new cartel um, stuff, which is their cash shop. They did a ton of economy changes to basically make things more of a credit sink because the economy is really messed up in the game. But I actually have strong feelings about this. Like, when your economy, you have, it's like real world, right? You either have the billionaires and you have the poor. Whenever somebody tries to do credit sinks or taxation, all it's doing is hurting the poor. It doesn't yeah. actually hurt the billionaires because they could give a fuck. They got billions. Right. You know what and I mean? They know how to make it instantly. Yeah. Right. Um, right. So for me, I, I always say to myself, okay, how can you fix the economy in a game that's been out 10 years? Option A is you just do a server wide wipe of money. Take everybody's credits and see you later. Be like, hey, we're resetting the economy. If you have a if you have a billion credits, we're giving you ten million. If you have a half a billion credits, we're giving you five million. You know what I mean? And like just convert it. A billion means ten million. You know what I mean? Like it's so it's the same credit amount, but you're just reducing it. So things on the GTN, it just scales. That's my opinion. I don't know that I, that I I don't know that that would actually help. Well, it might because then it means like credits you get from doing in-game stuff means worth, something worth more. They, right. they have more buying power. Yeah, you put see an armor set that used to be a million credits on the GTN are now a billion credits. Now, if you're right. a new player, you can't buy anything. But if you scale everything back and give yeah. everybody like say, hey, yes, you have four billion credits, but instead of four billion, you have 40 million. Right. Right. Yeah. You still have the most in the game and the economy is still going to be messed up. But now when you go to sell something, you're only selling it for 50,000 credits and an average beginner player can get 50,000 credits. Yeah. Like that's easy. That's that's attainable. Yeah. Right. I, I'm not an an economics person, so I don't actually know how this works. Well, but it fe- I, I will say that does sort of skew things to where, like, it's it's almost like your uh the time in which you earned the credits, like the, the date, I guess, changes their value. So, like, that means new credits after the reset would be worth more than old credits. But you you are kind of taking away credits for like the old quote unquote credits from people who have billions and billions. Mm-hmm. So you are technically devaluing them, even though it's even with the scaling. You know what I mean? 
And well, I don't know how the how to make that better. I but know, you're, know, but that's the only way to fix it. The only other option I would say is if they started a new server. But they're not going to do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like the game is in a state like they can't they can't create a new server because then all the servers that they have are going to be depopulated. Yeah, that's probably true too. Yeah. You know what I mean. So I, I just think devaluing the currency is probably a better idea. Yeah, and if people get butt hurt, you still have the most money in the game instead of seeing billions, you have millions. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like for well, for me. Anyway, anyway, so that's it. They've released the Mech Shaw Stronghold. So if you listen to our good friend Max um, from the. Uh, escape podcast with Sema. he's been talking about this stronghold for years that he wants the mech shaw stronghold mech shaw is basically on an asteroid and the whole thing has like a ray shield around it in the open space part and you just see rocks flying everywhere it's a fucking cool sci-fi place and yeah. they finally listened to him like they called him and like discussed discussed it and they're giving him his dream stronghold it's not nice. really true but that's that's it. Um, they're giving you an opal opal voptilla mount, which is a pretty rare mount. It used to be you could only get it if you were a content creator and giving it away. But now they've opened it up to other things. So it's it's rarity is going down, but it's still rare. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what, there's two more things. The first one I'm really, really, really excited about. There's something called the Masters Datacron. And if we go in the Wayback Machine for when Nick started to play it, we wanted him to raid, but he really wanted to do the story. Yeah. So he bought himself a Master's uh, Data Crown. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And to, to jump to level whatever, 60, I think it was. At the 70. Time? Oh, maybe Seven. it was 60. It was I don't know, 60 or yeah. 70, but it didn't, really, it didn't erase the story. Right. But Nick could raid, which was cool. So they're updating the master's data crown or they did. And now you can do it and be max level of 80, which means you can raid with any character as soon as you use that, which yep. is really a big deal for me because not all of my characters are level 80 and I don't really want um I don't really want I don't Definitely really want to grind through all of the story to get my characters to level 80. I want to do the story once or twice and be done. Right. Yeah. But now this has opened up the door for me to really purchase this master's data crown, go to level 80. And now I can raid with any tune I want right away. Yeah. And you could just uh, skip the grind essentially. Right. Cause right. I really do miss raiding in SWOTOR but it's turned me off that you had to be max level to raid where it used to be level 50 to raid in, in certain raids. And it would just, and you could level through raiding, which I really love to do. Yeah. The last thing, this is really, really, really big news for the game. Um, they did a 64 bit client update. So what that means is they were running on a 32 bit server forever. So it's basically a graphical upgrade and the game runs better. And that yeah. allows them to do better graphical changes later. And it's basically they're coming into 2023. Yeah. With that, um, it's a really big deal for the game to have that. I'm super excited for it. Um, I am going to come back and stream it for a night because I need to finish the story and I really want to see what the game looks like and how it flows and how it feels because at the end of the day, it needed it bad and they switched from a server-based model to uh, Amazon Web Services and it's in the cloud now. Okay. So the game runs better. So instead of having like dedicated physical servers which i'm sure they still do yeah but not like n now they're using the cloud-based stuff which essentially makes the game run better i don't fully grasp how that works but me if neither makes the game work better than awesome i am not a game engineer at all yeah i don't know how that works at all i i oh i just forgot about a yep anyways moving on the Write uh, it in the notes yeah i will um well no i just remembered a guest that i want to have on um, who agreed to come on 
that I need to nice. look that Woo-hoo. would know how that stuff works and could explain it for us morons. But well, I that just say book it. We have yeah, a yeah. schedule. I know. Um, I gotta, I'll see him uh, next weekend, probably. Yeah. So that's this is a really big update for Swotor. I'm really happy with the dev team. Um, I know it's not a lot of story stuff, but the stuff they did in this one is a good quality of life change. Yeah, for that, all players. And I feel like it's probably a lot of work for him too. Yeah. the The last thing is I'm still waiting for is they really need to make raiding free to play because yeah. you're paying a sub. You don't need to sub to play PvP, but you need to play a pay a sub to raid, which is kind of fucked up. You know so, what I mean? You think the game should just go free to play then? Because what else would you get? I don't if- think they can. Well, but I'm just wondering what else you get in a sub other than raiding and like some cartel coins. Well, nothing. There's okay. really no benefit, but they can't get rid of the sub because at the end of the day, the 10 all the billionaires love having billions of credits and the credit cap and all that stuff um is there. But oh, okay, gotcha. If you have if you don't, if you're free to play or preferred, there's a limited amount of credits you can have on you, and that okay. makes a difference now in a fucked up economy. Right. Um, do I think the game should be 100 percent free to play? Yes. The reason why I don't think they can is because I think the mouse overhead licensing fee has to be expensive. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, I I don't have a clue, but. My assumption is all the sub money goes to Disney mm. and they can't or, just or, get rid of it. Or at least like a big chunk of it or something. I bet it most of right. it, dude. Think about yeah. it. Disney. Disney doesn't give a fuck about anybody except earning money. Oh, well, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? They just laid off 7,000 people because they want, they're not, the board isn't making enough money. And I mean, when you say <laughs> 7,000 people for a, a company that has millions of employees, it's nothing. Yeah. It was, I mean, I, I saw, I, I read that article. They, the CEO or the, the, since the chief of that division that they laid off, it was 80 years old and like going to retire anyways, essentially, or should have retired a little while ago, but it was Marvel entertainment, which is like not anything to do with Marvel studios actually making the content. It was just like right. the merchandise section. And there's like, we can just roll that into like the other merchandise sections with the other Disney stuff. You don't right. need a Marvel specific whole department. Right. Yeah, so that's what they laid off, and I like I get it. That makes sense. I guess that to, makes sense. Yeah, trying to cut costs. Like I get that. Like you're Disney. Like that's probably one of the biggest merch companies in the on in the world. So like, yeah. if anybody knows how to sell merch, I think Disney does. And they don't I think they can roll in the Marvel content merch even with the rest of their merch. But anywho, I rest my case. Yeah. Right. So um, the the what last thing. I'm just copy and pasting. Um, The last thing I want to say is kind of on the off the cuff. So I heard a story and I want to help people out that don't have a job. Okay. So if you don't have a job and you're looking for a job, I'm going to give you a foolproof way to get a job. Even if you were a bagger in a grocery store, you want to get yourself a pay raise, apply for a job and say you worked at Twitter because Twitter right now does not have an HR department. And you can say whatever fucking oh, I, job I you that. wanted. Yeah. You can have any fucking job you want. And no, there's no HR department to check. So you can say, yeah, I was the fucking vice president. Well, not probably not that, but like I was a, I was a project coordinator for the uh, marketing department. There's no yep. way to prove it. That it's true or false. So if you're looking <laughs> for a job, you're welcome. You work Just for make, Twitter. You work for Twitter. Twitter. Exactly. Yeah. Blue Twitter. Check mark. Yep. Boom. You're welcome. Yeah. I remember hearing about people doing that with Circuit City after they closed. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was this, 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 and this at Circuit City. And there's no way to verify because Cir- there's the it's whole business just closed. is closed. Right. There's yeah. no HR yes. department to call and be like, hey, did this person actually work here? Is I heard here? this and I was like, I got to share funny. this with the community. So if uh, you don't have a job, <laughs> just lie through your teeth. I worked for Twitter. <laughs> Fuck it. Get, get a job. Post exactly. um, some stuff on Twitter about how. I don't know. Great Twitter is, and then <laughs> then you can be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did some I advertising. Yeah, yeah, advertising so, for Twitter. 
Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern time, clan night. Join us. Even if you're not playing Destiny, just come join us. Nick came this week and just hung out and chatted with us all night while he was playing COD. Like, just come hang out for clan night. It's a great time, great people. We have a lot of fun, and it's super-duper mellow. Um, Yeah, it's fun. So... So if all this sounds fun to you, go to aie-guild.org. Get our Discord information in the top right-hand corner of the website. Ask for a guild invite once you get in the Discord. And whether or not you play Star Wars Old Republic, Destiny 2, World of Warcraft, Starcraft? Is that the MMO? Whatever. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online. Um, you fucked this Lord of the Rings up. Online. Oh, boy. Yeah, all this the above. is a butcher. Yeah, you butchered this. Pax messed you up, man. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, hey, 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 AIE. If you want to have fun and play games, we would love to have you. Nick has to pee. We got to turn the TV's volume down. We'll be right back. My God, what is taking him so goddamn long? Nick, hurry up, man. It's all that beer you're drinking. Come on, bro. Bros of four homes, man. Get off Snapchat. And we're back. So today we're recapping all of the craziness from our Paxi's trip. All the games. All the oh my god! I didn't even put notes about tabletop games. All the tabletop games. It was awesome. Uh, well, since I'm talking, I'll go first. Yeah. So, right off the bat, I, I'm I haven't really looked thoroughly at the working class questions yet, but I know some of them ask like, "What's your favorite game? What's your favorite thing?" Something like that. So we might get double coverage here. But first thing I want to talk about is the. Peaky fucking blinders. Okay. Peaky blinders. That was a, so they had a game there, a VR game. I should back up. First of all, I'm a giant fan of that show. I love that show. Watched it as it came out. Um, it's a fantastic show. One of my favorite shows of all time. Then I, we get an email in our, in the millions of emails we got being media. They're like, Hey, this game is here. Come check it out. So I go and it's a, it's a Peaky blinders VR game called, uh, Peaky blinders, the King's ransom. And I had never played a peaky a uh, VR game before. Like, not actually. I think I played. Yeah, it me on, neither. I think in college somebody had like a Oculus Rift, and like it was like a roller coaster or something. And you just sat in a chair, and I looked around, and was like, ah, oh, it's cool, and it looks like you know graphics from uh, like an N sixty four or something. So like, I didn't. I hadn't actually played real VR games. So this was on a Quest two, I think and um like a newer one and you're actually you play like a guy getting recruited by the peaky blinders gang and if you haven't watched the show go watch it 100 percent. but um you play a character doing that and like the immersion level is something that i've never experienced like if you listen to the show you've heard me talk about like some of my favorite games and one of the biggest things that i enjoy about video games is the immersion factor like getting engrossed in the lore of a story getting engrossed in some world that you actually feel like you are the character, or at least you you're in that world and putting that game in VR where you're actually in Birmingham, England, like talking to Tommy Shelby getting recruited, like, and then you get to look down and like pick stuff up with like the controllers and you actually see your hands. And anybody that's like played VR consistently is like, yeah, that's VR. That's normal. But like, well, I got a double whammy of like, oh my God, VR is cool at the same time of like, oh my God, uh, Peaky Blinders. So like, yeah, it was really immersive being like, oh, hey, here's a cigarette. And you like take, the, reach out, take the cigarette from him. Then you like have to hold it up while he lights it for you. And it's like, oh, here's some gin. Like you pour the gin. And like, oh, if you, if you find a paper that you want to keep, like you have to put your hand over your shoulder to put it in your backpack. Or like you get a pistol. It's like, okay, you don't, can't just like click a button to holster the pistol. You have to move your hand like to your chest slash shoulder strap thingy for the holster for the pistol. Like, yeah. put the pistol away. It was just like, it was really immersive in a way that I've not experienced before. So I, I really enjoyed it. I don't think the game's out yet. Um, I think we are in talks with their PR folks for some things, but uh, stay tuned for those details. But yeah, um, uh, this weekend, I'm just going to tell everybody this weekend. Well, you're probably going to hear this. That Actually, you're probably going to hear the, the day one recap. Of yeah. us sitting in a bar long before this episode, anyways. Um, oh, uh, well, I, I, we got to talk about how we want to post the, that audio. Yeah. Well, no, we're just going to post it once it's edited down. Just cut out some of those yep. silences and post it. Like, yep. we're just going to cut the audio, whether A did it or me. We're just going to post it the way it is. 
okay. and have it be raw. Just while we're chewing on stuff, not saying anything, just cut out <laughs> yeah. the shit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. To like, for I reference what Marcus is referring to, we recorded, um, I don't even know how much time it is, but it's like 38 minutes. Time. Was it Thursday night, I think? Thursday yeah. night. Thursday night. So the first night at PAX, uh, we were just sitting in the bar at the bar of our hotel's like restaurant and just having a drink and we ordered food while we were sitting there. And we just so recorded our, our, our conversation. We went and I'm gonna break it down for you guys. So like A Track said, he flew in. We went to PAX all day. When we got back Thursday. to the hotel, like we had invitations to all these after parties, everything, and yeah. we were gonna go and then a Trax and Nick like sat down and they were like, Oh, I'm just chilling. I'm tired. And A Trax so tired. Yeah. Nick, Nick was like a little bitch. He was so tired. Yeah, it and was a- un- it was uncharacteristic, I I would say. But it was a long day, whatever. Yeah. And yeah. I don't judge anybody by being tired, because when you're tired, you're tired. And then A Trax flew in and he like I know for a fact that like if you don't sleep in your time change, like at normal nighttime, you're gonna be tired. Because you're yeah. going to kind of like reset your body because you're going to be so exhausted by then. So we ended up shooting the shit fucking until, I don't know, midnight. Just yeah, in the, the hotel latest. room. Yeah, the yeah. latest. Like midnight, just hanging out, the three of us. Like it was fucking awesome. Yeah, I think and we just, were in the hotel room by like nine-ish maybe. Yeah. Nine or 9.30. Somewhere in there, like, yeah. The I shit. think we were, no, 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 dude. We were in there before that. Like 8, 8.30. Yeah, because we, yeah, we finished packs, came back. Oh, yeah, because then we went to the hotel. Yeah, it had hotel, to be like 8, bar, 839. So like yeah. 839 ish. Like, yeah, because we left after the um, show floor closed because we all just wanted to eat and chill. Yeah. But like, it was such a good time just hanging out, the three of us, because like, it's never been done before. Like, we do right. it here, but it's different. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. in person. It's right, in- all of the loudness. Yeah. Dude, you know. <laughs> <laughs> on we the asked, show Mark, marcus asked a tracks like hey what was your biggest like the most surprising thing like coming to the east coast and stuff and then this was his answer yeah the i i've realized that the problem that marcus and nick have with microphones is not because they consistently use poor microphones but because both of them are so loud but I, I, <laughs> they're just very they're equipped with strong vocal cords it's true but like the these poor microphones just clipping <laughs> all the time cuz i'm marcus will hold his phone right up next to his mouth and be like screaming into it at least from my perspective and i know he's probably just talking normal but the, the I am volume the volume is just so loud <laughs> it, that's it that's all i've got <laughs> but anyway yeah, it's just loud. Loud so, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah we are a lot of people so the and then when we were chilling nick and eight tracks were fucking smoking weed like it was fucking christmas it was 420 right yeah and they yeah, got we, did, we imbibed in some some candles yeah products, it was great yes. and then so we we finished that and everybody passes out and it's like i was super refreshed the next day I felt way better Friday. Yeah. Like yeah, night and day too. better Friday. Mm-hmm. Right. And we woke up, had a nice little breakfast, nothing crazy, but like power up. And then we went to the thing like Friday was like awesome. Well, Thursday was awesome too. Um, yeah. Different then, flavor of awesome Friday. Yeah, yeah. And then Friday, Joey Feta came out. Yeah. And so the Friend four of, the of show, us. Were, Joey Feta, a.k.a. Frozen Cheddar, a.k.a. Cheddar. Underscore fan mini club underscore painting yeah fan club manager yep fan club manager yep um so and then so we all we all hung out went to pax hung out basically together all day long fed has spent like six thousand dollars on board games he uh, did <laughs> like we could have had joey on this week probably oh my god all right oh, wait a yeah. minute no. i'm gonna just talk about all right so everybody knows these two fucking assholes on the podcast yes Podcast yes. two and podcast three, podcast <laughs> okay. host two and three mm-hmm. over here, yeah. right here in the show. I wanted to get beer. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. And they're like, this oh, is Thursday. Uh, this is yeah, Thursday. This is this Thursday. Is Thursday. And, and they're like, oh, all right, let's go. And I was like, hey, we're going for a walk. They're like, all right, dude, we're not even across the street. And they're like, dude, I'm sick of walking. Like, why is this so fucking far away? 
And I was like, guys, it's right up the road. It's like over the bridge. It's not far. Dude, I'm fucking tired. Why are we walking so fucking far to get beer? (laughs) Like, this is, the, dude, we've been walking for 45 minutes. I was like, dude, we've been walking for three fucking minutes. Like, what is happening right now? No, I like, started dude, off, I started off with like, dude, we were walking for 10 minutes and it was two minutes. And then like five minutes, like, dude, it's been like a half hour. Where are we going? Yeah. And right. And I'm like, like, like dude, seven walking. minutes and I'm like, we've been walking for 45 minutes. And then I think eight tracks goes, what are we walking to Maine? <laughs> yeah yeah well because <laughs> marcus sold it as like dude, it's so close it's like it's just around the corner seriously it's it's just down the road just around the corner it's fine and so and it was like a 12 minute walk right as soon as it wasn't just across the street nick and i started throwing a fuss about it yeah and like obviously we were we were being obnoxious on purpose and it was yeah really funny oh hilarious yeah it was great marcus is like the tasmanian devil or um, <laughs> just like exactly. So anyway, now what's wait? What's that cowboy's name from the Looney Tunes? Seventy Sam. You just your seventy Sam. Yeah. Like I can't do the impression, but you get you get the gist. Yeah. Anyway, so we get back and it, it was just a great time. So then Friday, we um, we go to Pax. We're fucking meeting with people, and I will say. The coolest part about packs with media badges is when you go up to a booth and start playing a game. Oh yeah, you get to like the, the the developers are like, "Oh hey, how's it going? Great, how are you?" And then if you like, like move your the- arm or like they notice the yellow media badge, they completely change their tune and like anything you need. Can I help you with anything? Oh, is like, there anything like? Let, let me explain this about like like here's how it works. Here's what here's the idea. Here's the concept. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and I would say that was probably the best part for me. It's like you actually got to talk to people about the games and they were like on point. They yeah. were being precise because it's like they already had their script in their head of what to say. Um one game we didn't get to play, I forget what the hell the name of the game was. Feudal Lands. Feudal Lands, which yeah. was a survival MMO, and it was one of the most popular indie games to be demoed there yeah. and their fucking build broke and then they couldn't update the the game because the internet was so slow in their hotel yeah which i can contest to that, attest to that yeah, yeah we had like upgraded quote-unquote wi-fi and it was still dog shit it was like it was dog shit. five meg down or whatever well it was hotel wi-fi yeah like hotel I mean, wi-fi what do you expect always bad it kind of worked <laughs> um, but i will say the feudal lands i got a free shirt from them so yeah, you, did. you know, and it's green. I love green. So there we go. I'll um, take it. Nice. And just some more fun stuff for me, like as well. Be, I'm not even mentioning the games because you two are going to mention all the games. Um, like I got Julia and Ryan, uh, Mandalorian and Grogu. What are those things called? Like the Yoshi, Yoshi, like those like foam chairs. Uh, foam chairs. Know. Like they're oh, like, yeah. like seats. I remember those. Oh, what were they called? Yeah, it was like. It was like Yoshi, Yoshi. years. Yoshi, Yoshi. Or... Well, whatever. Oh, the kids loved it. Yeah. I saw some really cool shit, everybody. They have so, always some cool stuff. Um, one thing that I didn't expect to do when I was at PAX, but I did it and I owned it, was they had a bunch of food trucks there and they had a waffle food truck. Oh, my and, God. And I took it yeah. down. Like, I was like, okay, I'm going to eat the meme. This and is then Thursday. Sure, yes, this is Thursday. And as soon as I do, you guys fucking know it. Here comes A-Tracks with his phone out, takes bite no. pictures of me eating the fucking waffle. And then oh, he takes too, yeah. another picture of me with, like, the fucking waffle falling out of my mouth. Like, the most <laughs> unappealing pictures ever. And he's like, oh, this is great. I, I, I took a great photo of you, okay? Oh, now it's like I know you're married, obviously, but like that's like dating profile worthy. You're like smiling. It's like great, like quarter quarters framing. I forget what you call it, where it's like not straight on, not on the side, but like yeah, it was, it was that was money in the bank. A tracks is photography skills. I cannot, I cannot speak for my picture would be like for an ad for that waffle place, right? Because <laughs> Marcus was like he had it in his hand, also in his mouth, and he was like looking down at it, super happy and enjoying his waffle what was it like what was it it was nutella and bananas oh 
that and sounds like those, so good. The waffles were like, I don't know if they put maple syrup on the waffle machine or something, no. but like, like the, the the maple syrup was like they put it cake, in the batter, caked. Yeah, it's in the batter or something because like the outside of the waffle where it was like direct contact with heat had like the caramelized like um, sugar kind of texture and like it was yeah. extra mapley. So you didn't need to put like other syrup on there so that when you had your concoction, it was like already syrupy. But and I like, did I got, the comp- Go I got the I was going to say I, I, I like after seeing Marcus get it. I got I think I got some empanadas first for my actual lunch. And then, yeah, and um, he got a fucking stain on my destiny raid jacket. It, that'll come out. It's just empanada juice. <laughs> Also, I, I, if you want to see the waffle pictures, it's in the Discord under Paxi's 2023 pictures. Scroll all I have the way to post, up. It's honestly, literally I, the first picture. I have to post. Um, I got to post all my pictures because there's so many. Well, do it after the show. But yeah, I yeah. got a I got a waffle sandwich. They called it, which was a scoop of vanilla ice cream between the two mapley waffles, and that was unbelievable. That was so much better than I was expecting. It like I like wanted to do it again Friday, but I didn't. I ever re- re- refrained. I regret not getting a waffle from that place. I really should have. I agree. Kind of like you regret not getting a sweatshirt. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. So f- Friday we're walking out of there, and we're like we walk by the empty like merch stand for packs. Like and it's a big like merch- it's we like ten thirty at night. Empty merch stands at packs. Yeah. Yeah. It was well, no, 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 before that, Marcus. There. It was like oh. when you were actually leaving. It was like there was oh, still yeah, staff yeah. selling merch. So yeah, um, w- when we first left, and Atrix like, oh, I should buy something, and we were like, Well, now's the time to do it. And he's like, Ah, it's okay. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Then sure enough, we go out that night and we're like hungover, and then we didn't even go to pack on Saturday. Could we Nick weren't really gonna it. anyway. We were just gonna like stop in and leave essentially. Yeah. Excuse me. So like, we just eh, we just if I'll we do just, it. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, so he was like, if I do it, I'll do it tomorrow. And we didn't go to the tomorrow because we ended up having to drop Patrex off at the airport um, by the time we got our ourselves together. But um, yeah, it was like that night I was walking out and I was like, ah, oh, $70 for a hoodie. I don't, I don't, I really, I want to sleep on it. I don't know if I want to spend 70 bucks for a hoodie, like, man. And then it wasn't until I was sitting in the airport waiting for my plane that I thought, Yep, should have spent the seventy bucks right then. Should have just gone. Just do spent, it. Spent spent it and and taken the hoodie because I yeah, I didn't buy anything I think at PAX, which is my one of my regrets of PAX is not buying anything. I get you. I got the mic, I think. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And I food. Right. Did I buy anything else? I don't think I bought anything else. I don't even know. Honestly, I don't even know what I bought. Joey Feta bought like six or seven board games and then a mystery box that had five more board games in it and like paint brushes for painting minis and like i'm thinking i don't think he got dice but he, we looked at a lot of dice and then like he yeah he spent like 500 bucks or something I, think. I don't yeah i don't know what i bought dude i bought i mean we bought like f- a lot of food into everything obviously because yeah we it. yeah but i don't i don't think i bought anything for me yeah for like yourself. i really well, wanted to buy yourself you bought the stuff for your kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, got it. They fucking are sleeping of course. with them now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they're super stoked about it. Hell, yeah. Um, But to recap the whole trip, like the just spending time, not the games, yeah. is like it was just awesome to be three of us and everywhere we went, like we were able to talk to developers. We were able to hang out. They were so nice. Um, so during the pre pack stuff in the emails, we got an email from riot games, um, about this game called mag seeker. I'm going to build it. Up. Mage seeker. seeker, mage seeker. Sorry, whatever. So I'm going to build it up immediately screws up the next word out of his mouth. That's yeah. the fucking one the I title. Did. The title, the title of, the of the game. I'm going to hype this game up. Uh, let me call it some magician or some shit. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it's a top down, a, like ARG, ARPG style game. Yep. If you guys know um, Atrax, he has a super hard on all the time for Riot games. Anything that Riot, Riot does, That's not Atrax. True. It, yes, it is. Oh, it's Valve. Valve. Valve is where he has the boner town. Well, that's for CSGO too. But anyway. Yeah. That's what I mean. Um, not, not Valorant. Yeah, but, 
Well, not sorry, Valor, Riot. but but uh, League. okay, League of Legends. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We got invited to. Um, uh, we got an interview with a private demo, but it ended up being in our own hotel. Yeah, like not in the expo hall. It was they had rented out like a conference room right. in our hotel. And which yeah. is cool because it was our hotel. So like we got to go to our hotel, drop off our shit, go down to the third floor. And when we walked into this, it was like snacks oh. and drinks. And they were like, oh, hi, you guys must be working class nerds. We have a private booth waiting for you. Yeah, and you walked in. There was like curtained off, like yes, yeah. loose, like, and there was with, a like, couch. With, like a there food, was yeah. a fu- there was a fucking couch. There was a, yeah a table with a chair and like a computer set up to play the game, and oh, then yeah. a couch and then a couple folding chairs too. So like and and then two of the developers who work on the game sat with us the entire time talking to us. Yeah. Yep, it was fucking amazing. And then a Atra- so like Atrax is a gamer. Okay. Like I play games, not like, like Atrax. Play, play Marcus games. and I are working class nerds. Atrax is a gamer. Okay? Is a working class gamer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like, like, there's it, levels to this. Yeah, like if we need, like, if we need Atrax to like, if we need to like look good in any At, other, like, de- <laughs> like Atrax, just go play. Because if I play, it'll be an embarrassment because, like, I'm good at video games once I learn them. But, yeah. like, Atrax just sits there and it, like, works with his brain. So, anyway, so Atrax goes through this whole entire fucking demo, beats Gets the final the- boss in the first try, doesn't die. Not at all. And they were well, like... I died a lot before I got to the boss. Yes, But I did. did beat yeah. the boss first try. And, yeah. yeah, you and beat the first try without the- dying. Even the developers were like, the, there's a tricky mechanic. Should I, should I spoil it? I guess I can talk yeah. about it, right? So, yeah. like, the, in, the, in the boss, in the demo anyways, which they didn't... The format was, it's like, okay, we're kind of dropping you in the middle of a mission here. You already have some powers. And then that was the first section. The second section is like, okay, this is later in the game. You have even more powers. And you're, we're dropping you in the middle of another mission. So, it's not like it's the first boss of the game. It's, it's later. But you go in and you're like, your mission is to break somebody out of jail essentially and yeah. this one mage comes up to you and is like it's a mate that was a mage right the, the boss character i think uh, or no it was a mage I, seeker i, I, I don't some, remember but it some, was i forget the lore it was some magical yeah. person with a staff mm-hmm. um yep. and it's like hey like you're not gonna get this person out of there and the person you have to rescue is like i guess also magical but on your side and so the bot but apparently the 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 ma- magician guarding the place that was the actual boss was so powerful you couldn't hit them they were invincible the whole time so like you're but you have to figure that out and what you actually have to do is attack the gate that's holding the prisoner back and mm-hmm. that's the boss's health and then once the prisoner gets out you defeat the boss but like it doesn't tell you that explicitly right. so the devel- that- so atrax H- figured it out fast yeah there's also a health bar at the bottom of the screen so you think Okay, well, I'm attacking. You you start off at the beginning of the boss fight, you know, cut scene, and then, okay, now the boss fight begins. And you start attacking, and it's like, invincible, invincible. And the the gameplay idea is that you play as, for all the League of Legends nerds out there, you play as Silas, who is one of the characters in League of Legends. And Silas, his whole kit, his whole idea is that he steals the ultimates of others. That's like what he does in the game, uh, in League of Legends. Well, in this game, in the Mage Seeker, he steals, you can steal the abilities of your enemies. Right. And then you use them to defeat the other enemies. So, for example, you steal the fire bolt from the fire guy and you hurl a fire bolt at the ice guy because he's fire to fire. And then you take the ice shard from the ice guy and you throw it at the fire guy. And you know, it, there's layers upon that, but that's the basic concept. And so your initial thought is, okay, well I need to then steal the right thing from an enemy and hurl it at the boss. And then the, it'll hurt the boss. But, because there's a health bar but like nick explained that's not necessarily the case you need to destroy the gate because the boss is actually too powerful and you need your buddy to i forget who it was but you need the person that you're rescuing to 
help you defeat the actual boss. And then, of course, then it's a cutscene. Right. But the developers were just like, oh, wow, I can't believe you figured that out so fast. Nobody ever figures that out that fast. Right. <laughs> A-Trax. And, and yeah. hence, Atrax is the gamer. It instantly gives Nick and me clout. Like, okay, working class nerds are gamers. And we were just like, yep. Yeah, we yeah, are. Sure are. <laughs> yep, <laughs> yeah, sure definitely. are. Yep. Yep. We could have done that. <laughs> yep. Are yep. you guys all good at I, that good I, at games? Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Taught yep. him yeah. everything he knows. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. I, I, like, me and Mark, like, if you guys ever watched Dragon Ball Z, like, me and Marcus were like Hercule after the Cell Saga. Like, oh, yeah. I killed him. We sure did. <laughs> Definitely defeat. I'm the strongest yes. ever. Ah, uh, yes, we did it. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, long story short, um, that was amazing. Um, and that then was, that that was probably the. Would you say that was probably like the bougiest or like most like, ooh, we got exclusive shit part. Though. Yeah. Like, well, that, that was wasn't my, for not for me, but for you got for a tracks for sure. So I would say. That was the most. That was the most elite that I felt. Yeah, like that was the most like the biggest like VIP moment. I felt. Right, and right. I was like, "Whoa, what?" Like that was the moment that I really felt like super exclusive media. That yeah, was, that was, was the moment I really felt it. Right for me, the most. Um, I wouldn't say bougiest, but the most like the perfect medium was the behemoth booth. Yeah, where we had our own like little area, but because it was kind of small, it felt like we were just taking up all their back room space. You yeah. know, like we we all well, piled break it in down. There. Let everybody know. No, uh, the so game. Explain, it was a game. the setup. Yeah. Okay. Come on, so well, I showed up. I showed. So okay, I was doing something else. I forget what I was playing, but I was doing something else. And Marcus and Nick Probably texted DDR. me. Hey, uh, oh, I don't think God. I was doing that. That, we'll get all I'll have to back. talk oh about God. that. We I'll definitely will circle back. We're going to do that now before Behemoth. Well, you, we yeah, walked you should by this Behemoth. fucking booth, okay. the Intel it was, booth. It was in the and, Intel booth, Intel booth. In the and Intel there was booth. a DDR pad, and I was like, "A tracks," and he's like, "Okay, I'll do it." <laughs> so A tracks, we were waiting, and these people that were on it were like, oh, tap, wait, can I get, tap, can, tap, can I, tap, yeah." Can I give like the quick backstory? The double double backstory, sidebar upon sidebar. Like yeah. Atrax can explain this better, but Atrax played the shit out of DDR back in the day. He's like an expert, like really good at DDR. I think you said you played like the developers of the game lived near you, or one of the you know dance so, machine games lived near you. Yeah, you'd go to the arcade all the time, play with them, super into it, right? So I played a version of Dance Dance Revolution. Well, I guess it's not really a version. Dance Dance Revolution is made by Konami, and yep. that's the game, that's the rhythm game, traditional up, left, down, right. The one that yeah. I played the most as a kid was called Pump It Up, which was Pump, made by On Demiro, and that's the diagonals, the middle, and the back, or the front diagonals, the middle, and the back diagonals. So it's actually yeah. five right. instead of four, Yeah, but... Same concept, same idea. And some of the people that worked on Pump It Up worked on Dance Dance Revolution and In The Groove. And yeah, that's how I know them. So it's like I have a really strong dance gaming root. In, background, yeah. Yeah, background. Definitely. So I, I course, would qualify myself as a professional, yeah. Yeah, I 100% agree. So Marcus and I see this DDR set up. And Marcus, how were the people dancing that were on it when we first saw it? Oh, like tap, 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 like, and I'm like, all right, like, this is not too bad. And then Atrax gets on this fucking thing. Okay. There's, there's, and then he starts going through the menu and Nick's like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, I got to change some things. I got to change some things. He changes like the speed modifier. Yeah. yeah, The speed modifier and the, and he went to like mega extreme difficulty and then, like, cranked up the BPMs of, like, this 170 yeah, BPM it, Yeah, it was, like, like, 170. We're going 300. And, yeah. and dude, Atrex starts doing it, and it's, like, starts off, like, tap, 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 tap. All of a sudden, it's, like, and he's, like, fucking running, holding on to this bar in place. And then he stops for a second. He's, like, I'm out of shape. And he's going. <laughs> 
It was like anime levels of foot speed. It was just like a cloud, like yes. blurring of feet underneath a track. And it was, it was ridiculous. So, and I, then it was and this so is funny. Thursday. Yeah. Yes. And, 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 and Thursday, just, just fresh off the plane and everything. We just like, played one of the first yeah. thing we saw. Yeah. In yeah. sweatpants. Right. Yeah. Like had so, to tighten his sweatpants for this. The whole deal. So we. Oh my god! So we finish it. Atrax gets off the pad and just sits down. It's like a tired puppy. As soon as yep. the puppy's done walking, he just sits. So he sits, he's drinking his water like he's dead to the world. And we're like, well, we're going to move on a little bit. He's like, all right, I'll move. He walked like 15 feet and collapsed at the pole. It's like, <laughs> you guys go do you. I'm chilling here for a bit. Yeah, that was, just, that was just before the waffle. They're like, oh, we're pretty hungry. I think we're, and I was like, all right, cool. Y'all, you guys can go walk. I had I'm, my like a, thirty pound backpack with my laptop in it and everything. Oh yeah, because because we couldn't check into our hotel yet, so and you right. wanted the backpack to walk around with. So you still had it loaded with your laptop and all your stuff and everything. And with. my switch and yeah, right. So you're just lugging around this giant backpack. Get off the plane, play Dead Island two, which we'll talk about after, and then immediately just like <laughs> go like full ham on yeah. VR after like, not playing since like pre COVID. Right, <laughs> my the, I I likened it to if anybody's seen that episode of Family Guy where Peter gets on the I think it's the Boston Red Sox he can play for a day, and then he he scores he hits the ball and he's trying to run and it zooms in on his body and they're like what the hell is he trying to do? Uh, <laughs> he's trying to run as fast as possible. Doesn't he know that all we've got is Alfredo in here? He can't possibly do that. I'm calling a full body shutdown. He just right. like pulls the switch. <laughs> that was me with like internally like, what is he doing? He's trying to play like the craziest song he knows how to play. Just right off the bat. No warm up. No nothing after years. Shut down. Goom. And then I just yeah. collapsed. Yeah. It was funny. But it I did return like, Damn. and redeem myself later. Oh, yeah. You you rallied. You just needed some time. That's all. Yeah. Friday. I, right. I rallied Friday. So uh, shortly after that, I walked off and played some games. And then I'm going to loop back to this. And You're I gonna, get a text. Wait. What are you going to do? Loop back hey, to Bile, Behemoth. Back on the ranch. Yes. That was perfect. Back at the oh. ranch. Yep. I get a text from Marcus and Nick. Hey, yo, it's behemoth time. So I started walking around looking for the booth, and I finally found it. And I stood outside the front of the booth, <laughs> just kind of looking around. And I'm like, well, they said that they're here, but I don't see them. So I texted, hey, what what's going on? Oh, no, we're, we're in the back of the booth. And I was like, what? And so then I see Marcus walk out from behind the back like of the screen. This, this, yeah, this like black foldable cloth screen. And yo, we're in the we're in the back. We're in the press room or the little press spot for yeah. Behemoth. It was like their storage for like the devs had like their snacks and their backpacks and like yep, and like all their various stuff. Behemoth okay. merch. Yeah, yeah. All, all the, the cool above. stuff. Yeah, and hey, they had, like they had a. <laughs> Oh, uh, they had a. Um, I just watched that episode recently. It's fucking awesome. But um, I've been I've been getting back into Archer. But um, the yeah, they had like a little table and one chair set up, maybe two, but one at the table to play with, like a little monitor. So that's that was like their private demo spot for for media. Which like, oh, and it was cool. and it was definitely like cramped and stuff. But like yeah, but like who cares? You're like dude, sitting down and being able to game at a video game convention is like. T- top tier as Atrex would say it. Yeah. So yeah. I'll explain. It was so very beh- homey. Yeah. So when all of these games started offering interviews, everybody kind of got excited before the conference and like via email is what we're talking about. Yeah. And everybody was getting excited about their games and I didn't have any. And then I saw the Behemoth. So Behemoth made Castle Crashers um, years ago. Castle Crashers is a side scrolling four person action just like beat 'em up. Yeah, beat 'em up fucking mayhem game. It is one of my favorite like friend games to play because you can just play it and you're all on a screen and you don't even pay attention to what you're doing. You're just mutilating everything in the 
in in the path. Um, and I was so excited. Like I I'm I'm forbidden from emailing because my grammar is terrible in an email. Yeah, but, like you're. I don't understand how your speaking doesn't translate to typing. Well, I, mean, I don't know. I I can understand a rough draft, but the fact that you don't like go back and read it, you just send yeah, it off. That's, a lot that's of times, a tracks. It's it's a time thing, but I okay. really don't do that's it. Fair. But it doesn't matter. We're not we're not the grammar police right now. So, <laughs> uh, but I was just yeah, exactly. But I emailed them right away as soon as they said that they had availability. Like I'm like, oh my god. Like, I love Behemoth. I love these games. Like, when this game comes out, we'll be playing. Us three will be playing it. Maybe we'll even drag Feta with us. And Yeah, he'd be game. Yeah, yep. for sure. And so I got the appointment. And so this, out of all of the demos, was, like, my baby. Like, I was super excited. Yeah, you and, booked it. Right. It's your, it's I booked game. it. Right. And I... It's not an ego bound thing. I'm really good at talking to the devs. Yeah, no, and seriously. like I actually enjoy that more than playing the game with you guys talking to the devs. Like I would yeah. prefer to be the one talking while you guys are gaming, uh-huh. just because. But like this game, I wanted to play, so I got to play. Um, I think I, was I first or did you play first, Nick? I think you played first. I think I played first while you were. Yeah, because I was talking. And no. No, no, you played first. Oh, I played first. Yeah, because the main dev uh, came in afterwards. We were we had Sarah, Sarah O, right. was hanging out with us. She yeah, was she's a PR the, person. The PR. Yes. Anyway, um, so basically, it's another side-scrolling game with. And you're an alien. It's kind of a sequel, but it's not a sequel because it happened 16 years later after the events of the old one. Blah yep. blah blah. The game was fucking fun. So basically, you got to do two levels and fight a boss. Yeah. Uh, the first day, I completely sucked. I got through the first level, died in the second level. But I was not going to let that go. So then day two, I went back and I got to the boss. I did not beat the boss, but I got to the boss. But this is a co-op game that you will be seeing us play. So this was my favorite part. And like the private back room was nice because like, we could talk to each other and like it wasn't believe it or not it was loud but it wasn't that loud back there cuz you were covered surrounded by cloth so it was almost like a quiet room yeah mm-hmm. it was cool especially uh, like in the context of of the rest of like the booths that we visited so like not not so like this is not really a negative it's just like sort of how things worked but right uh, almost every other booth we went up to we would have an appointment with them and they, we would talk, the devs would talk to us, but like they wouldn't be like, Oh, Hey, you know, random person who's playing the game. Like, do you mind if you, we cut in and have the, the media person who has the appointment play for a little bit. And I'm not talking like I expect us to have special treatment all the time, but like, I know Marcus and I ran into that when in previous years where we've gotten kicked off of games for someone in media to, to have their time to play. So it was like, we kind of expected that a little bit. So like when that didn't happen for like almost any booth, it was a little like, wah, wah. we got to wait like in line, like everybody else when we had an appointment. But, um, so that was a little disappointing, but when we got to behemoth, they were, they had the, the extra special spot. So they didn't have to kick anybody off the regular demo areas. They just brought us in the back and it was awesome. We got extra time with the devs to chat and we got like private play time. So we could just all hop right on. I thought that was, yeah. that was really, really cool. Right. Yeah, I agree. It, it like extra stood out after like going up to different booths and are just like, oh, well, you got to wait. But yeah, S- speaking of waiting, or I should say a lack thereof on Thursday, we walk in. So Thursday, uh, the actual to, for <laughs> the regular citizens or, or uh, civilians, <laughs> <I mean. laughs> the, the, the for the paying folk. The paying part. That's a good point. We did not. <laughs> we did not pay for our passes. The uh, <laughs> as Storm and Norman would say, I don't pay for passes to PAX. But um, it opened at ten ten a.m. So we got there at probably around nine twenty nine thirty, and um, media could get in starting at nine a.m. So there's really not that many people in there. It's just only media or people who worked at the expo. And the first booth that was giant in front of us, uh, as soon as you get off the escalator was 
uh, for Dead Island 2. Oh, yeah. So, yep. So it's... Welcome so like, to hell A. Yeah, so it's set in LA. It's a zombie game. Uh, it's a first person like hack and slash. Like you're you're making your it's way a, through zombie zombie areas. It's the same like, as Dead puzzles. Island One. Yeah, uh, I'd never played Dead Island One, but it was awesome. It was just really cool. Like that game probably had an hour wait for that demo. Like oh, all yeah. weekend after oh. that, like with forty five minutes after we played, it was probably an hour wait. But like we walked the line in, was packed. Yep. Yeah. Nobody was there. We walked right up, chatted with the developers, or at least the PR person that was there, and then um, played right away. Uh, I was okay at it. I died a bunch. A tracks like beat the whole thing. I was and, yeah. The the guy said I was the second person to beat it at PAX, which is second pretty, person to beat the demo. That felt pretty good. Hell yeah! See, this is what I mean by like A tracks is a working class gamer. Marcus and I are working class nerds. There's levels. But um, I did well. I did really good. I did really good in that demo. Um, I made it to just about the end. But like for me, like standing up and playing a game is not awesome no. for me. Yeah, and the way where the way the desk, uh, the desk that like the stuff was on, like my wrist was at a crazy angle, so I was getting yeah, like, purple tunnel-y feeling. The height was not ideal, right? Yeah. Um, but. But yeah, so the dead I, it just proves that Atrex is a gamer. That um, was awesome. The game was cool. It was polished. It was like a great start. Uh, um, I was go going ahead. to talk about a a game that I found solo. So like at certain points during the weekend, we just sort of like wandered off in different directions from each other. Just yeah, but like we fun. were pretty much like one of us. Like we were all to get like two of us were together, especially with Feta. Like yeah. Nick and me and Atrex were together like the whole day. Or me and Nick were together the whole day, and like, yeah. you know what I mean. Like we were always together. Like I was never solo. Yeah. I was solo for like I don't know forty five minutes maybe. But and that's when I found this game. I think I went and got something to eat, hit the bathroom, and then I was like, all right, let me find a game. And I just walked up to this random game, and it's called uh, Castle of Alchemists, and it's coming to Steam May twenty twenty three, so in a couple months. But it is a medieval setting like sort of pixelated art style um tower defense game but so you set up so basically the castle is getting invaded by knights from the, the rival kingdom whatever and you got to set up the tower defense in like the courtyard or whatever and but the different thing about this game is you also play as a character that can go in and fuck up the other knights while your traps are doing that too so right. like the plot is like, oh, the alchemists in the castle have like been developing this super soldier, essentially. It's like this mutated being. We have to wake him up out of his mutation cycle early so that we can defend the castle. So like that's why you don't have all your powers yet. And you like it's an RPG style, so you get to earn more stuff and upgrade your abilities and guns and things as they go along. So you have like a cannon and you have like fireball spells and they have like different potions and so it's cool to set up a set up like a, a tower defense style game but then also you play this character that hops in and like you're running around between your traps and stuff and like shooting and beating up you have like a giant hammer that you can smash bunches of enemies with at a time it was really fun it was cool it felt good it felt polished like we played some other um indie games that like were really not polished um i don't want to like be negative so i won't say their names but like i <laughs> A couple games yeah. I was like, oh, cool. Like, this is a cool concept, but, like, the game is not polished at all. So this was this was awesome. I just wanted to shout that out while we were going through the list of, of stuff to chat about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Did we finish talking about, like, Behemoth, the Alien Hominid Invasion actual gameplay? I think we've, we covered it pretty good, right? I think so. We'll definitely be covering more of it. Yeah. we Stay tuned for details on a lot of these, I think. Uh, we have some some things in the works. You'll probably see more of these games. Yeah, yeah there's going to be our, a lot. Our due PAX media diligence because we yes. got treated pretty nicely. So uh, yes, we gotta we gotta we'll honor some the video agreement. games. Yeah. So as Hell, everybody yeah. knows, I love Castlevania games. Love yeah. them. And when we got there, there was this game called Gal Guardians, yep. and Gal Guardians is basically a Castlevania game. It's like co-op. The, yeah. You can play it co-op, but here's the thing is there's a melee and a range character. And when you're playing solo, you can switch between them. Yeah. 
because there's different things each character could do. Yeah. And I wanted to play this so much um, because of, you know, because I wanted to, but there was always a line. Always, always, always. And then at some point on Thursday, Friday, Friday, me and Nick were walking past it and there was an open thing. And I was like, here, let's go. And man, we got sunk our teeth into this game and they give you like 15 minutes to play the game. There's like a timer and then yeah. it automatically restarts. Yeah, and, and it I was, think I think that's good in a con- in a, uh, Yeah. In so basically, yeah. I don't think there was an end to the game. You could just do whatever you wanted for 15 minutes. Right. And it was fantastic. And I am definitely going to buy that game 100%. Yeah, me too. Um but again, I'm bringing it back to Elden Ring like when are you going <sighs> to play it? <laughs> right now, like honestly, after stream No. Yeah, after stream on Tuesday, I logged off right at like 11.02 and I logged right into Elden Ring. Fought a couple things, got the ability to summon, and I tried to fight a troll and I died. And I died twice because I was over eager. But like, I wasn't trying to play, but like, I just needed to play. And like today, I think I've watched like 12 beginner, like beginner guides to Elden Ring because like, I want to learn. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. like just about the game because I don't listen to it. Um, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just click through all the, all the things. Um, there was so much. Oh, wait, wait. We finished talking about Gal Guardian. So yeah, you, you, it's, yeah. Side scrolling platformer, but like, it's just Castlevania. Like, like Castlevania. It's Castlevania, Castlevania Sevilla Night. Uh, it was just cool because it, it was co op. I don't think I've ever played a co op game like that. And again, Super, super polished. Like, it's a pixelated art style. Similar yeah. to, like, the old Pat Castlevania games. But, like, the gameplay felt great. Like, the hitboxes, I never felt like I got, like, cheesed out of a hit or cheesed into, like, get taking damage or something. Like, everything felt super polished. And I am not a person for that gameplay, that game style at all. Like, I'm always yeah. like, I'm terrible at platformers. That's I am not too. my jam. Like, it's not something I'm into. But, like, I, it came quickly to me um, in a way where, like, games of that style normally don't. And it just felt really good. It was satisfying to play co-op. Like, um, it really impressed me, honestly. Especially, like, seeing so many games in, like, different stages of development. Like, seeing something that's, like, simple but super polished. Like, I really appreciated it, you know? Yeah. The only downside to the game is it was on the Switch. And the fucking Switch control, like... At least with a PlayStation controller, their letter, their key, their buttons are X x y square x triangle. y square and circle or triangle but like the switch controller mean, wait, has the ex- exact same letters as, as xbox. the xbox just in a fucking in jumbled spots. way yep. and it's terrible it's so like, oh, confusing it's, it's so like, dumb oh, press x to jump and like and you're pressing and i'm not jumping oh that's where b it's, it's where b or circle is on a, other controllers right yeah it's like oh my god but um, but yeah, that that was my only gripe as well. But I think and I was gonna, I was platforms. yeah, right. it's on Steam. Well, yeah, it's That's on Steam. I but say. I was gonna, so I liked the game so much, like I was gonna buy a collector's edition of it, like that was gonna be my purchase. But they only had the hard copy Switch version. And I'm like, I don't need another Switch game. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But that was a lot of fun. Honestly, oh my god, what was the name of that game? Go go. I don't know. It was Here, go, look go. for it. I can. I got one to talk about it that I played sure. with Joey Feta. Yeah. So Joey Feta and I played a dinosaur game that he was really looking forward to. That I don't really want to talk about or say the name of because it was awful. But um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, um, but I got a free little dinosaur out of it. So like, uh, yeah, the people were super duper nice. The one of the PR folks came up to me because I had a Dragon Ball Super T-shirt on. Shout out to Marcus. Got me a T-shirt. That was sweet. Nice. Um, what shirt? And the Dragon Ball one. Oh yeah. Um, also got me a Voltec t shirt later in the day, which I wore yesterday, but um later in the weekend, I mean. And then um oh, so Joey and I go over, we were chatting with the dinosaur game folks, and uh the, oh, there like, it is. they were they were super nice, the booth was decorated nice, but like 
the game was just terrible. Like the animations weren't done or anything. Like mm. <laughs> things just like gliding around, clipping over all kinds of stuff. There's a bug where like Joy fell off the map. Like, anyways, it just needed a lot of work. But like the concept was cool, just not not polished at all. So um, right next to it, as we were leaving, we saw this game called Giga Bash. And Gigabash. it's a, a four-player, four player, like, free-for-all melee game where you play as different kaiju. So you play as, like, all the characters from the Godzilla movies. There's, like, a giant mech robot. I forgot what you call those. A Gundam, I think they're called. Like, okay. there's, like, flower monsters. Like, and you destroy the buildings and throw buildings at each other. Like, it was, it was like Godzilla destroy all monsters melee. Sounds like King of the Fighters, too. From, from, you know, like, I played that on GameCube with my dad a bunch, Godzilla Destroy All Monsters. This feels like an updated version with the updated graphics and everything. Um, I think it's available now on, on all the platforms, or at least Steam. Yeah, yeah, all the platforms. Just Nick, you Switch. should reach out to them and see if they'll send you a key so we can play it. Yeah, I will. Yeah. It's on. Uh, I'll, you know I'll what I mean? Write it on the list. Yeah. Like, it was, yeah it was d- but really don't wait because cool. you'll forget. I'm going to add to the list while I'm talking right now. Right. Did you did you find the name of that GoGo game? Yeah, I did. So my favorite thing about a video game convention is like when Nick or Atrex was playing a game and if I got sick of standing there, I just I'm infamous for just pulling off. If there's an empty console, I just start playing it or console, yeah. like station empty station. I play it no matter what it is. Like I played this other game and it was the dumbest fucking game I ever played. But. Why not? When in Rome, right? Yeah. So I stumbled across this game called Go Go Town. Okay. Um, it's immediately I saw it and I this woman, uh, Cheryl, she was the dev, the PR uh, director. And I started talking to her. I was like, what is this? She goes, well, have you ever played Animal Crossing? No. Um, have you ever played anything like that? No. Did you ever play Stardew Valley? No. And she's like, oh, this is going to be interesting. And I was like, so basically, immediately, what is my favorite thing in New World, Atrax? I don't know. Cutting down trees. Chopping wood. Yes. So immediately it says cut down three trees. I was like, I got to cut down trees. She's like, yeah. And so I'm playing this game and it's, I went from like mega energy to straight chilling yeah like all of a sudden she's like oh you can get on this bicycle and ride your bike around i start riding my bike around yeah i'm like oh this is really relaxing and she's like oh yeah you can go in that cave and mine some stone and you can build this and you want it you can buy make rock pets and sell them to people I'm like what rock pets really <laughs> and so i'm playing this game going oh, yeah. oh my god i'm having like 20 hey, minutes 20 minutes go by. Nick and A-Tracks are playing straight lights. Real quick. I yeah. pulled it up on Steam. Like I Googled it. There's a live broadcast of the developers playing it right now on Steam. Oh. Really? Yeah. Here, I'll put the, put the link. Give us the I link. I'll, I'll put it in, so, the, um, in the Riverside chat. Sorry. So. Yep. All right. So anyway. Um, boom. It's there. So, um, you were saying you you were, you could make pet rocks. Oh, you can't chat, huh? You might be able to find it on Twitch. So, yeah. full sloth is the developer. Yeah. Well, anyway, so I had so much fun playing this game. And it was super relaxing. It's another game that I went back to and played. Like, I've never played a game like that. But as I started to play it, I'm like, man, this looks really familiar. Like, really familiar. And then I played it more and I looked right at the dev. Because at this point, I've talked so much to Cheryl, the PR. She grabbed one of the other devs to come talk to me. And I looked at them and I was like, you know what this reminds me of? And they're like, what? I was like... Zelda link to the past. The dude melted down. He's like, dude, nobody has said that, but it is an inspiration. Like the map layout, the way it looks, the way you move through. I was just like, wow, that's fucking great. And, um, I had so much fun doing that. It's just, yeah. Oh yeah. I can see that. 
Yeah, there's nobody streaming it. I'm... Oh, wait, was the, did the dev get, like, teary-eyed when you said that? No, just, like, you know when, like, you hit a, a spot? Like, when we left Riot, yeah. Atrax felt like he had the biggest dick on the planet. Like, it was dragging behind him. <laughs> like, it's a oh, 100%. You know what I mean? Because, like, the, because oh, the devs man. were like, dude, yeah. you beat this without dying? Like, what? Like what? Yeah, when you get yeah. the when you get the big compliment like that too, and yeah, yeah, because yeah, you like, know that's not normal, especially no. when they announced the game like three weeks ago, three weeks yeah. prior, and they yeah. had been developing it for four years, right? And it's all this exclusiveness. Oh yeah, that was it. It was like, it was right up there with when they told me I was the second person to beat uh, Dead Island Two, Dead Island 2. and right. I realized one other thing uh i'm gonna just very quickly mention this to to cut in marcus uh they had a booth there the aorus booth which i think is a i don't know a gaming company. gigabyte gigabytes yeah, yeah uh and they had a cs go 1v1 like section where people oh were my god i 1v1s. forgot about this yes okay and of I course s- marcus signed up atrax uh, no, it wasn't like a sign up thing. You just walk up and well, in no, no, no. Line. I was like, Atrax, you, you got to do this. Yeah. yeah. So you stand in line, and as I'm standing there looking at it, I realize this isn't Counter Strike Go. This isn't CS Go. This is CS Source Two, and I'm very convinced because the AK sounded different, the pistols sounded different. Uh, the like the shadows and the shaders, everything looked way better. So I got to play Source Two there, which made is that me confirmed. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's there. Are they already have people playing it? They had the first pro show match already. Oh yeah. Like it yep. is the last major is for CS:GO is announced. Like it's it is huge. It's coming out this summer. It is it is a hundred percent confirmed. It's coming. Yeah. So you pretty much played Counter Strike Two. So I played right? the new Source Two, and that felt super great. Even though I lost my one v one seven to ten. Yeah, but I you got were wrecked. close though. Uh, well, it, it seemed closer from the outside looking in. Like I feel like you were really you were compet- definitely competitive. My yeah. my excuse is that they didn't let you adjust your game settings, meaning they didn't let you adjust your crosshair. Which, yeah. for people that play CSGO, anybody knows that if you can't play with your crosshair, and you've got, like, especially mine is very small, and I don't have a dot in the middle, this one yeah. was, like, super long lines. So, for the for reference, I usually play with, like, a .5 length, and this was a 5.0 length, and okay. then I don't have a dot in the middle, and this one had a dot in the middle. So, it was, like, super, it was just big and in the way. But yeah. the gameplay felt super great. Anyway, well, cool. I had to interject that one thing. Well, while we're uh, while we're talking about super awesome updated like exclusive stuff. exclusivity, yeah, that felt yeah. that felt pretty great. Yeah, I definitely want to check out that Riot game, Mage Seeker. Like that seemed really yeah. fun too. It's not usually my normal like type of game, but it seemed interesting. Well, mm-hmm. I like the art style too. What PAX taught me was there's so many awesome games that I want to play, and I don't because I'm locked into streaming one game. Yep. Right. And it's time for a change because, like, El- I'm, I feel like I've talked about Elden Ring like 10 times tonight, but, like, I want to play Elden Ring. I want to play Ga- Gal Guardians. I want to play Crime Boss. I want to play WrestleQuest. Oh, we you didn't know talk I mean? about Crime Boss yet. Or WrestleQuest. Um, yeah, we talked. But, like, I just want a game. What? Yeah. I hey, we agree. Place. All right. So so we go. I'm I'm with Atrax, and he's like, Mark, you got to come play this game with me. I'm like, okay, let's go. So it's this game called Crime Boss. And I was like, what the fuck is this? I didn't care. It's a first-person shooter type game. He's like, have you ever played Payday or Payday 2? And I said, yeah, love that game. He goes, it's just like it. So we start playing this game and the dev um, is right there talking to us about the game. He's from 505 Studios. We're chatting about the game and he's like, dude, uh, 
this is you want to pick this guy because he has an assault rifle. Don't you pick this guy because all he has is a pistol. He has other skills that you'll need in the game, but like you can have the bot do it. Right. And yeah. like we went in and this game was legit. It's a co-op game, right? Yeah. Four yeah. players. Yep. Nice. And it was so much fun. And the dev uh, linked us together. So we were in the same match. I had so much fun playing that game. Because it was like, it was hard, but it was easy. Like, you could kill things, but you could die. But it's unlimited revives. Yeah. You can revive your teammates as much as you want. Yeah, the the objectives were very simple. Run in here, go get this, take the loot, run, run it out to your van, don't die. But you couldn't just blow through it. You had to kind of work together. All right, right, yeah, we'll slowly clear through this area. And it had that very loose arcadey shooter feel to it. I'm looking forward to that. Crime boss rock broke rock away, something like that. That yeah. They uh the that developer was super duper into like partnering up too, which was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um so it's a good it's cool to see like an enthusiastic developer on top of a really good game, you know? Right. It's one thing to have like enthusiastic folks at the booth, but then like if the game's terrible, it's like wah, wah. but like right. like that dinosaur game that I will not name. Um <laughs> it was that was uh like it was cool to see have have a, both in combo. Um yeah. can I chat about something a non game related on the trip? Yeah. So so A Tracks, along with Marcus and I being uh extra loud, um, I think we also like the room cold and I like a lot of airflow, so like I had the fan on for the AC. Like, even if the AC wasn't on, I had the fan on all the time. And then I also had brought, like, a little fan with me because just in case the hotel doesn't let you do that, I like to have a fan. I sleep with fan noise. So I had a fan, like, on my bedside. And the way Atrax... Uh, oh, my God, I forgot to talk about this. I'll circle back to that. Never mind, I'll do it now. So Atrax, we... Let me back up a little. In booking this trip, okay, let's talk about the room. So hotel rooms were really expensive, in that area, especially around PAX. I think normally the hotels are like $150 a night, which for like a city like makes sense, right? But because it PAX was that weekend, they were like $350 a night. So which turns into for two nights, it's like $750 ish. But then with taxes and fees, it's like $950. So that's a lot of money, even if you split it three ways. So I really didn't want to get a second room because then that would have doubled. So we got one room. Marks and I took the two queen beds, and then a tracks. I got a um, uh, twin air mattress, um, so we could put a put squeak that in there with. And I got some sheets and stuff for him. And of course, we prorated what he you know paid his share of the room because he got an air mattress and not a real bed. So, but I go to Walmart to get the air mattress, and I'm looking at the sheets, and I'm like, okay, I can get the standard issue green ones for like eight dollars, or if I look over here. For twenty dollars, I can get the bright pink and purple rainbow unicorn sheets. Yeah, <laughs> and well, it was it was it was like some sort of like kids very, show or something. Yeah, or, some sort of kids like, show, or it wasn't yeah. even a unicorn show. It was just like the sheets for like the character in the show, essentially. Yeah, yeah. So it's like pink and purple with like clouds and rainbows and unicorns, and no, it was awesome. No. The what? name is of the show is Jojo Siwa, okay. and, oh. and it's just it's just patterns like all little girls love unicorns and rainbows like that's all it is. It's little girl yeah. shit, sheet set, but it was the funniest shit ever because when Atrax opened it all up, he's like, "Are you fucking kidding me? I'm oh. not sleeping on that." Well, and it was funny because we get there and we get were to, finally yeah, we... check into the hotel. What yeah. time was this? Maybe like six well, afternoon. Four, five, something no, we, like that. No, because we checked in earlier because we did like a pit stop and then went back to the... Oh, yeah, that's right. So it was, it, I don't know, around before lunch, I think. They needed a yeah. power up. And I'm just yeah. I'm just sitting in the chair, you know, doing my... I forget exactly what I was doing, but I was just preparing for the rest of the day. And Nick was like, oh, yeah, uh, so there's this is your bedding bag if you want to like check through it and I just have, make yeah, sure have... that like everything is to your liking. And I was so exhausted in my head. I was just like, nah, dude, it's fine. Like, I'm sh- I'll am deal with it when I set it up later. Like, d- it's fine. You can just set it over there. It's no problem. 
Yeah. He's just like, okay, like, okay, all right, fine, whatever. And, the, and like, I revisited and it like insert two or three the micromanaging. Times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then later, um, I'm doing something again. He's like, all right, so you, you definitely want to check your bedding. It's like, oh, all so right, check fine, it out, dude. dude. I'll I'll like, do it. Cool. I'll, I'll I'll see that it's an air mattress with some sheets and a blanket. Cool. Like whatever. Fine. And then I unzip it, <laughs> and I just see this like very pink rainbow unicorn box <laughs> staring at me and uh i was very i was like ah oh, all right yeah okay this is this is what's happening <laughs> all right the best i will part say was like oh go ahead i was just gonna say at least they were new and because they were meant for little girls they were actually relatively comfortable okay good yeah i, I that was my point was like i feel like that's a pretty like grade a harmless prank yep you know that's what i mean perfect it's like yeah. nobody got hurt. Nobody's in. I mean, a slight embarrassment, but that's nothing crazy, you right? Know? Yeah, just like fun little little prank, I suppose. But yeah, um, it's uh, yeah, that was that was fun. Um, I think we posted the pictures in the Discord if you want to check it out. Yeah, for but, sure. Well, I, I think I did anyway. I was all proud of myself. Um, but no, what I was referring to. So, Atrax is at the uh, in the air mattress at the like the, sort of the foot of our beds, Marcus and I's, and. So he's essentially got the the way the air layout was like the vent for the AC was on up high on the wall and right in front of him. And then the way the fan was be, that I had, it was almost pointing at him, too. So we made like one. I think it was Friday or, or Saturday morning. I forget which what morning he's like. Yeah, it's like a vortex in here. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, there was there was <laughs> constant wind. So for reference, I don't know what temperature Marcus and Nick like to sleep at. I imagine it's somewhere at the point water freezes. <laughs> but <laughs> but I like to keep like my... okay like like high 60s like yeah, 67 right. 68. Yeah, of course that was an exaggeration. But like it, <laughs> from me very cold. I keep yeah. my room and I understand that I keep my room warm. But for yeah. me when I'm sleeping it's like 75 80 somewhere in there. Oh, and i have i have that sounds horrible a fan to keep the air moving and sometimes i will crack the window but i like it warm i do not like it cold so it's actually worse was, for you when i was sleeping i was sleeping in sweatpants and a shirt and my i had my hoodie on plus the blanket and all this wind going on and you're like it was sucks well, I was t- I was too tired to care, and I was yeah. also too happy to care because that was that was. I've said this before, but that was a trip that, like, that was the best trip that I've taken in years. I can say, I haven't, at least so far, experienced a point where I'm like, oh man, yeah, that was a really sore spot in the trip. Like everything went pretty smoothly, despite the long travel. Really, not that bad. Because everything that we did, every game that we got to go see and everybody that we got to talk to, it just made up for it. Yeah, a hundred percent. I had a great, I had a great time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, honestly, I did not realize that you were that cold. I just thought you were complaining about the wind, but no. I feel a little bad. We could have adjusted the temperature. Well, I was comfortable. <laughs> if I wasn't comfortable, I would have said something. Yeah, for sure. Um, Atrax, what else did you play? So, Marcus played uh, Elden Ring, and shortly after the Elden Ring booth, I I walked away, and I found this game that is another Souls-like, and it's called Anatria, The Last Oh my god, I played that game. I'm hoping that I, uh, I said that correctly. But it is a Souls-like game. That's the best way I can describe it. It was a lot, a lot of fun. It had a stagger mechanic, and I couldn't... I can't remember exactly all the details. The uh, person there was super, super kind and explained the system to me. I got to the boss, and I got pretty close to beating it, but I died. And uh, I just kind of... We didn't have time. I was... We had a, another appointment with Death Roads Tournament, which I will talk about after this. But 
I did revisit the booth a couple of times just to mess around with the game. And I kind of tried to beat the boss, but I didn't really try to. I just tried to grasp the um, dodge and parry mechanic and how to stagger the enemy. There is some sort of um, last song, like, I don't know if it's a status break, but basically the character kind of gets glassy and then you can like hit them and it shatters them out of their normal state. And then they're kind of weakened. It's like their traditional stagger. At least that's how I remember it. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong, but if you are a souls, uh, if you are a dark souls fan, I know we have quite a few of them out there. Anatria, the last song when I played it, it was pretty polished. Um, and it was like the combat felt really good. And, once you got the dodge timing down, the dodging felt really good too because of just how it moved. And also, the demo that I played was an en- Unreal Engine 4, but the game will be an Unreal Engine 5. So it should oh, be damn. even better than wow. what I played. Um, yeah. So that's another thing too, is that if you want a Souls like that's an Unreal Engine 5, go check out Anatria, the last song. E N O T R I A, the last song. Awesome. And then right after that, I had to cut that short because we went to Death Roads Tournament. That was is, another game that surprised me. That like, game I was surprised was at awesome. how much I liked it. Yeah. And it's already out on Steam. It came out two days ago as of the recording date. So it came out March yep. 28th, 2023. Yep. And it is a roguelike deck building racing game is how it's officially described but basically you have your car and you have your deck which your car has different cards that it can play and you travel along the road each each stage is like a little spot on your map and you have you, you have your entire road map that you can see from start to finish so you can kind of plot your course right and i should also say not to cut you off. No, um, please do. The, the like lore of the game is it's set almost like a Mad Max style sort of setting where all the cars have like yeah. crazy guns and like spikes on them and extra armor. Mm-hmm. So like your fight, you're going along this road in this like sort of apocalyptic deserty sort of feel with all the crazy cars, um, crazy like upgrades to your cards, cars and weaponry and stuff and you're fighting other vehicles as you're driving on this road so that's Mm -hmm. why it's called death roads tournament where you're like continually as you go on you like um select your you go down the road on the big map is essentially like each little spot on the big map is a is a level more or less and that's where you're fighting other cars and your the cards that you draw are different things that your car does either changing lanes or like shoot weapons in front of you shoot weapons behind you or you have special abilities like the character that i played as it was like a vagabond and like he essentially it doesn't say that it's alcohol but it's like i forget what the name of the card was but basically it's a liquor bottle is the logo and then there's yes a mechan- there's a yeah. mechanic where like if you um crap what was it called if you swerve too much like you have a swerve bar or something like that and if it goes to zero, you lose control of the car and you draw from a different deck that just like makes your car move all over the place. Yeah. So like that that special card with the liquor bottle on it was like your your swerve bar goes all the way to zero, but like you do way more bash damage. So if you slam into right. another car, you do way more damage, which is kind of funny because it basically means like your driver gets drunk and then just like thrashes all over the place. <laughs> Yeah. Which is just a silly, like, mechanic, you know? So when you're actually playing these individual missions on the map, you've got, like, five lanes that you can switch between. And the game is, if I remember him saying correctly, the game is hand-drawn, like the art style is is hand-drawn. So... You're going along and you can, there are certain hazards on the road in certain lanes. So like if you, like Nick mentioned, you draw from a certain swerve deck, if you lose control of your car, well, if you get to where you swerve up two lanes, but you're only, you only have one lane to go into, then you hit the edge of the road and you take, your car takes damage. Or if there's a car 
below you, then you swerve into them and you do damage to them, or maybe you do some damage to yourself. Right. So the cars can kind of change, and then some of your weapons can only shoot in front of you in certain spots. Some can only shoot behind you in certain spots. So you have to use your cards to position yourself on the road in the right spot so that you can use your weapons. Yes. And that it are is in your hand, yeah. That are right, that are in your hand. So it's like you need to build your deck appropriately, but also then other stuff can happen too. And the other cars can push you out of lanes or into lanes or, you know, so there's yeah. that whole layer. Yeah. It's like a uh, turn based. So like you can yeah. play more than one card, but each card has like a, is that what your, is what, was that the swerve bar was the value of the card? And if that got yes. zero, it was a problem. Yeah, I think so. A, I think so. So like each yeah. card uses up that swerve bar. So if you like use too many cards in one hand, that makes your car driving unstable. Like right, you kind of did too many things and you swerve all over the place. And then there's another mechanic that I didn't fully figure out in the f- few minutes that we had to play that I'm really looking forward to, but your cards would do different things depending on which gear you were in. Oh, and yeah. And as you did more things in higher gears, then your car would automatically shift to a lower gear. So you could play a card to shift to fifth gear so your cards are, your cards are doing something crazy. But then after your turn, then you're shift, you're like down into third or you're down into second or something like that. And then you have to sh- shift up. You have to play cards to shift up in order to do more. So there's that whole layer. And if you, if you enjoy deck building games or if you enjoy roguelike games, highly recommend Death Roads. That was, that and was the, awesome. And the devs were really cool and nice. Yeah, they were super yeah, awesome. He they like from, um, Poland. The com- yeah, they're from Poland. And I forgot the name of the dev company, but they they let me play until they had another media thing, and they're like, "Hey, we have another media thing, so uh, you guys have been here for like an hour. Can we can we let these we guys get- play?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we spent a lot of time there. Like, I was yeah. totally expecting to play for five minutes and be like, "And eh, whatever," but like, it scratched like the like Gwent from The Witcher Three yeah. itch with the mm-hmm. deck building. I was like, "Ooh." Okay, so you have to like strategize as you're playing, and there's a like. Once I got that down, I was like, "Oh, this is really cool." And then on top of it, like the art style is cool, um, it like engaging, and then like all the weapon animations and bashing and thrashing around is like very, like it sucks you in. It's like oh, it's all cool. Yeah. So I, I wasn't expecting to like that very much, and it really drew me in as well. But um, yeah, the game was awesome. One Death of roads tournament. So. I'm going to talk about two games. First one was I fell into this game. Yeah. And it was, again, a game that had an open seat. And it was called Amanda the Adventurer. Okay. And basically, if you've played this a game, it's called Her Story. It's basically yeah. like a video type puzzle game. So you're in your old house. This is all I know. You're in your old house or something and you're in the attic and there's a videotape next to like a VHS tape next to a TV and you put it in and it's this old TV show called Amanda, the adventurer where Amanda and this sheep woolly woolly, the sheep. Yeah. (laughs) Explain to you how to essentially do puzzles in the room. And the best way I can explain it is the attic is an escape room. Yep. Okay. And you and have so, to you have to do the puzzles that are in the video and then put them into real placement. And then you unlock when you I'll give an ex- example of the demo. The demo was you had to cook an apple pie. But when you finish cooking the apple pie, it was a new videotape. Yeah. So the video was like Amanda and Wooly are, oh, let's bake a pie. Oh, well, what do we need to do? Preheat the oven to 425 degrees. Then we need an apple. Then we need this. Then we need that. And so then you put all these ingredients into a pan, and then you put the app, you know, you put it in, and then out pops the VCR. Uh Uh-huh. And and so it was a pretty cool puzzle game. And what was really interesting about it was I was hooked. 
from the start. There was no like, I didn't feel as if I wasn't connected to the game. Like I wanted to do the puzzle. Yeah. So, um, it was a surprise game. Talk to the dev. Um, he didn't have any business cards. I gave him mine. I was like, dude, I really hope you message me. Um, because it's, uh, it was just a cool experience. Yeah. Right. He was the guy we talked to was a developer, video editor, and also voiced one of the characters in the game said they were aiming for like, I think three hours of story or something like that. So kind of a smaller game, but like Marcus said, going for deep immersion. And there was a part where like it asks you, what's your favorite type of pie? Because they're talking about pie and Willie's like, my favorite is peach pie. What's your favorite type of pie? And there's six characters, but there's, kind of like no right answer so i put apple because the apple pie right you were making the apple pie but i think marcus put peach or cherry no cherry yeah marcus put cherry and his ending well not necessarily his ending but some parts of his demo were a little bit different than the parts of my demo oh really it it wasn't it wasn't drastically different but it was like five to ten seconds at least what i remembered and noticed it was like five to ten seconds of different things and so he was saying like it's only maybe only two to three hours but the point is to have replayability and just be like just to be able to notice hey there's this really small change maybe it's a small one but hey it's a small change in the gameplay and and kind of figure out those those things yeah, I and you'll be able to hear that interview. I think we have that one recorded, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, almost. If I was involved, I re- there was recording. Nice. I recorded everything. I think my, yeah, Marcus had that thing on almost all the the whole time. All the time. Yeah, and the the last game I wanted to talk about was if you guys know I am I love wrestling. Like I really loved it as a kid. And as a teenager, and then it kind of drifted. But, like, in the last year, I really started to watch it again. And part of it is my son. Oh, he's getting him involved with it. Yeah. Yeah. So so we walked by this booth, and it was called WrestleQuest. And right past the booth was a real wrestling ring. Uh Yeah. And they had a belt in there. You could take pictures. Right, we didn't get a picture in there. That was weird. We did that. Fail. That was a total yeah. like oversight. Yeah. Well, anyway, so this is uh, this game is a 16-bit RPG turn-based combat wrestling game. Basically, your 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 idol is Macho Man Randy Savage, and that's what you look like. But you're a young wrestler, and you're gonna work your way through the ranks in this turn-based combat, and play it in a sense where you are um, working up through the ranks and doing it. And the yep. demo was actually awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of it, all of the devs were like full, like wrestling fans. Yeah. Fans. And like, the way they presented themselves, like one of the head devs was wearing a cowboy hat and sunglasses and a big leather jacket. Like, yep. yeah, they, they were, kind just, of were uh, like characters anyway. Right. Yep. They were acting as characters and it was such a cool experience. Um, and then during the day on Friday and Saturday, they had live wrestling matches, which was pretty ring. fucking in the ring, which was in pretty ring. cool. Yeah. In the ring. In the ring. In the ring. In the ring. You're a towel. Anyway. Um, <laughs> you're a towel. We were saying that all weekend. I don't remember where that started, but I somebody said, said you're a something, and then Marcus goes, you're a towel, and that was it. And yeah. all weekend, which is... That was the meme. You're yep. a towel. So you're anyway, towel. but this Wrestle Quest was pretty cool. Um, the one thing I will say about PAX East in the games, I feel like the demos... Some of the demos were too long. WrestleQuest was one of those, yeah. And like they, they sometimes they, they just weren't demos. It was the whole game, right? They like could have done away with a lot of the tutorial, 
and just been like, just wrestle a match. Right. And, and done some just like tutorial, like comic book windows that says, hey, a heart attack or a soft attack does this. This is allocates points. When you get hype on the cheer meter, that's when you gain more fighting points. Yeah. And it was such a cool game. That's definitely a game that, again, I'm going back to not playing just one game. That's a game I want to play. Now, yeah. do I think I'm going to spend the 30 hours it's going to take to beat it? Probably not. But right. that's a game I want to support. And that's my final thought on this. If you guys have anything else, great. But my final thought on PAX was some of the demos were too long. Yep. The the experience was awesome. But something else that I loved about it was I appreciated indie games like I don't now. There was no giant, giant like there was 505 Studios. There was there were Intel, studios there, big yeah. studios, Dead Island 2, fuck Toxic Crusaders. They didn't even yeah. come get back to me with T uh, an email, uh, an interview request. THQ Nordic. Yeah. yeah, like there was so oh, I played Rec Nation. Rec um Recreation. Rec Recreation, that's it. Oh um <laughs> But my overall thoughts were it was cool because it forced me to play indie games and I had a lot of fun playing indie games. Yeah, yeah. me too. Like I was I, I was pleasantly surprised on multiple occasions. And, and it, it caught me off guard. Right, and I never knew that Nick had such bad fucking gas until we stayed in the room with him. Oh, said the yeah, yeah, the yeah, Marcus yeah. It was gas. Nick. Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. No. Marcus right. was blowing up the place. Constantly. Yeah. Yeah, and of course I was in the corner where all the wind gathered. The vortex. In, yeah. In the, the, vortex. In the vortex. It was. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Wait a minute. We should make a, a new text or voice channel. In, in the vortex called the vortex. So something my <laughs> oh, I, I'm going to I'm going to talk about the last thing. So when with the the <laughs> Friday night, <laughs> Friday night, when we finished uh, the expo hall, we went for a walk and we walked by this room that had 500 TVs with different systems. Yep, and we walked the, into this room console free play area. Yeah. Yeah. And, I never I never knew this was a thing. Yeah, so we walked in, and you had to scan this QR code to find out all of the games they had. It was basically any game you wanted to play, you could play. Yeah, they had. Yep. You go up to the separate room that has a big table. It's like a sign-in desk, and you literally take a number from a deli thing. And they're like, 374, 374, 374. Okay, here, come on over. It's like, what, what do you want to play? What? Like, all right, we can do it on this console. That console sound good? Like, yep. yeah. All right. How many controllers do you want? Four? Yep. Here you go. Go play. So we ended yeah. up. Yeah. Give us your idea. What was the name of that game? Gang Beasts. Gang Beasts. So, yeah, it's... so we, we played with, with Joey Feta, and it was fucking awesome. You guys want to describe the game? It's uh, basically you are little clay people, yep. and you have to knock each other out and throw each other off the stage, but you don't have. <laughs> Like health in the same way that other fights. So, like you know, you think of Smash Bros or something. You have like percentages or Street Fighter. You have health. Well, basically, in Gang Beasts, when you get knocked out, the more knocked out you get, the longer you stay knocked out. Right. And so, uh, the controls are: one button is your right hand, one button is your left hand, one button lifts up your hands, the other button is like your head which you can like put your head down yeah, do like and that's pretty much it. And so you click the buttons for your hands and it will like automatically go to the nearest object, <laughs> whether that's the floor or your other people. And so then you just kind of like walk around and they're like, oh, like punching each other. Oh, it was, that you yeah, can grab yeah. onto them. It's yeah. so funny. Yeah. It was so it, much fun. And you like weeble wobble around and they don't, and it's not like exactly mm -hmm. like the right timing. So it's all sloppy and like chaotic. And it's like, you're laughing and you're like, yeah. oh, don't throw me off. And you flail out of the way. And it's, oh, right. It's wicked fun. It is a whole lot of fun. And we were like laughing the whole time. We were, yeah, definitely some of the loudest people in there. For yeah, like I thought, sure. like one table over from us was loud, and then we, 
they like settled into their game and then we started playing. I was like, oh, we are so much louder than them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure everybody in the expo hall could hear us at that point. Especially but, when we burst out laughing at like what you did. Yeah. So there's. Do you want to describe the, the yes. map? <laughs> so there is a map where two trucks are driving down the highway. Two semis, and, yeah. Yeah, two semi trucks are driving down the highway, and you spot start off spawning on top of these. Uh, they each are loaded with like one shipping container, and the yep. shipping containers on the inside, so like the right of the left truck and the left of the right truck, they have like doors that kind of swing open. So you can, with some skill, get into the shipping containers, but generally yeah. people don't. <clears throat> so you're up on top of these two trucks. As they're driving. As they're driving and you're fighting. So obviously then you get you knock people out and you throw them off the trucks and then whoever's left on the trucks wins. Well, yep. what you can do is there are some signs that come by, like sign the uh, giant highway signs, and you can either jump through. It'll be like over one truck will be a sign and then over the other truck there won't be a sign. So you can jump like through the little sign spot. But yep. you can jump on top of the cab of the truck and hold your headbutt button down and it will lay you on the top of the truck. And so then the uh. signs just go over you no matter which truck you're on. Yeah. So you're essentially like hiding on the because the camera is like behind the trucks as they're driving. Right. And you can still let you stand on the hood of the truck now. Mm -hmm. And so, like, the top of the cab, like, masks you, you know? Right. And there's that little space because the shipping container is slightly taller than the hood yeah. of the truck or the cab, the hood of the cab. So yeah. I was laying on the hood of the cab and... Out, out of the truck, yeah. or Yeah, the hood of the truck. And Marcus and Joey and Nick were all fighting. And I think it was Marcus was the last one, and he was hanging on to the oh, side me. of no, one of the me. trucks. It was Nick. I was, was never me. the last one. I was oh, no, terrible. It was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was well, Nick. I, right, I, th right. I think we knocked Marcus off. I had, I didn't couldn't see A-Trax. So I'm assuming right. he fell off already. So now yeah. it's me and Joey fighting. I end up like knocking him off, but he's like dragging me down over the side of the truck. He falls, gets eliminated, and I'm still hanging on between the two trucks. Right. Like, like somehow the trucks, like, I feel like they moved closer to each other and then they, spread apart they, more. They do. A they little kind bit. of bounce back and forth. Mm -hmm. So, like, at the point, I think I my guy was literally doing, like, a John Claude Van Damme, like, had his two arms. I think he does the splits in the in the movie. But has his two, uh, one arm on one truck, one arm on the other, and I'm hanging between. And I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. Why didn't I win? <laughs> like, I'm going to fall because the trucks are going to fall, like, split apart and I'll fall. Right. I was like, why didn't I win yet? There's nobody left. There's nobody else on the screen. It's just me. And then all of a sudden, I see eight tracks pop up, and you can do this emotion where you, uh, like, put both hands up, and he just goes, yeah. surprise! <laughs> and yeah. right as he goes, surprise, the trucks split apart. I fall, die. And it's like, eight tracks wins. I'm like, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> it was it was hilarious, because they're just, they're all, you can tell that him and Joey are just so invested in their fight and they're battling and battling. And finally, yeah, Joey falls off and then Nick is holding onto the trucks. Oh no, he's going to fall. He's going to fall. Wait, why haven't I won? And he right. says that just so, wait, why haven't I <laughs> why won haven't yet? I won? Surprise! And, and surprise! Boom, oh, I fall man. and die. Eight track wins. I was like, oh, I wish we'd recorded that. It was so funny. Good times. It was times. awesome. Good times. That was great. Um, I think that's the gist of, uh, of, of the game little highlights. Um, we will definitely have more PAX content. We have a lot of recordings to go through that we want to post between the dev interviews and our just like ramblings to our, between ourselves. Well, yeah, um, hopefully before this episode goes live, um, we can get the day one recap going so okay. that we can like that can play. Cause that's really actually good content. Cause you're getting us right out of the show floor talking about all the awesome stuff we did that day. Yeah. Um, yeah, you yeah, really true. learn a lot about somebody by what they order at a bar. Yeah. I'm, I'm not even going to, I'm not, I'm not even going to say that. Cause when you order something that is in March, you'll have to listen to this thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just, just listen to it. Um, did you guys see my text message? No. No. Put um a marker down. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can do, do got, that. That's fine. Do you want to or skip it? Uh oh yeah, it's almost midnight. We should skip it. Let's do it the same for next week. 
yeah, yeah. because we're still good. Like, I don't think we book a guest next week. I think we just continue the um, hacks talk. Recap. I'm going like to listen to this episode and then be like, oh, and we didn't talk about this or we should talk more about well, that. Yeah, I agree. And like, so while we were doing this, I'm in the, the go, 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 go towns discord talking okay. with Cheryl, who is the dev that I spoke about. And she's like, oh, my God, I can't believe you found us. We've been talking about you since PAX. Like, all right, let's go. Woohoo! Then you the I, intro. Yep. So uh, now I'm talking with the 505 guys right now in their Discord. And, um, yeah. So we're, Sweet. We're, Stay we're, tuned for more epic No, no, no that, stuff. Like, this isn't going to be in the podcast. Yeah, yeah, no. So. Okay. Anyway, um, so so, <clears throat> so we'll, I'll take us back and be like, so, I'll just explain. It's it. midnight. Yeah. All right. So, in light of working class questions, we have a lot more of PAX content. A lot more PAX content to talk about. Um, so, and a lot of our working class questions are about PAX. So, next week, we're also going to be talking about PAX. Hopefully, have those audio clips queued up. Definitely going to release our day one breakdown. Um, so, yeah. Stay tuned for more PAX details. What are you guys talking about in here? Find out next episode of Working Class Nerds.